Hello and welcome. Carrie here from Healing Humanity. The power of a proper human diet. I've got my bracelet on. I got my watch on. I got my shirt on. Where's why is the seat empty? Where's Jen? She'll be here in two minutes, maybe three minutes. Whoo, it's been a crazy day. So, what is the purpose of today's discussion? My entire family is now carnivore. Uh, the girls are all carnivore. Katie's like, I'm ketovore, but she pretty much eats carnivore every single day. And I think she just said she's ketovore so she can have the option to maybe have some other things. I don't know. Um, but Jen has been doing carnivore now. Today is her seventh day. She's doing awesome. Hey, shout out. My new friend, Nick Jennings. How's it going, buddy? I hope you're doing well. Um, so Jen's going to be here in a minute. It's always great to have other perspectives. I know a lot of people were interested in Jen's story and doing carnivore diet, I think, is harder for women than it is for men. Jen had some struggles because she was vegetarian for many years. Uh, so I think it'll be interesting. If you guys have questions for me, if you have questions for Jen, please post them with the QQQ and the, the best question gets a ribeye. Next time you see me, I will, I will personally hand you a ribeye. What a crazy day. I want to show you guys what's going on here. So we had dog in our dog kennel. I did a live stream earlier today. We had a private birthday party at the movie theater. Today is the last day we're playing Ghostbusters. And we actually had a whole Ghostbusters crew outside of the theater. This is why Jen's running a few minutes late. She's upstairs putting everything back together. It was crazy. We have a whole bunch of people upstairs above my head, literally right above me here. I can hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear it watching Ghostbusters. We are not uh, playing it tomorrow, as we shouldn't be, because it's Easter, and we're going to be spending time with our family tomorrow on Easter. So um, let me show you. Let me show you guys this real quick. This was nuts. This was from a couple minutes ago. So hopefully you can see this. Okay, I just, I literally just filmed this 45 minutes ago outside the theater. <laughs> so there you go ghostbusters the whole ghostbusters crew is here there were cars honking their horn people stopping to get their pictures taken um it was awesome and the tricky thing is Normally on Sunday is our big, very busy turnover day because we have to switch the movie over. We have to switch the movie posters outside over. We have to go outside and the big metal marquee letters all have to be changed. We have to change the website and all of that stuff. Well, we had to do that today as well because we're not going to be here tomorrow and it's closed tomorrow. Um, Outdoor Katie said, looks great. Wish I could have seen it. Well, Outdoor Katie, you could have seen it. You work here. Let's come on. Where were you? What's going on? Katie, today was Katie's day off. Katie went golfing earlier today. Katie was on a live stream earlier. I did a little live uh, lunch cook-off. I made some uh, strip steaks. They were fantastic. Shout out all of my carnivore friends. Ellie, Nourishment Redacted. How's it going down there in Florida? Hopefully nice and warm for you. We got some sunshine today. Not warm, but it, it's some beautiful sunshine. Brett, who's your carnivore? So for anyone just jumping on right now, wow, there's 155 people here already. Uh, we're going to be talking with, with Jen. This is like, I got an exclusive interview with my wife, Jen. She hasn't done many videos. She's not a big fan, but she's been doing carnivore for seven days now. She's going to be down here in 60 seconds. She's just upstairs finishing things up from the theater. Um, while she does that, let me know in the sidebar, where are you, where are you from uh, in this carnivore world here? Karen said, looks like so much fun. It was a blast. So thankful, grateful, blessed. Movie theater is just amazing. Rick said, I thought Ghostbusters had a station wagon. Yeah, it wasn't an exact replica, um, but it was really cool. They had Ghostbusters music playing out of it. They had all of the stuff attached to it. Well, here she is now. Hi, guys. You get to talk into the microphone. Hello, guys. How's it going? Phew. So Jen's here. Uh, I was just telling them that it's been a busy day today. How's your day going? Busy. Let's see. Let's get you on the camera here a little bit more. Hi. So uh, you want to talk about – talk about? Uh, there's people still jumping on right now. So if anyone has questions for Jen, 
Uh, shoot him in the sidebar. Let's go. What did you, what did you do today, Jen? Uh, oh, I had to think about it. I was here earlier this morning. We had a, um, a uh, private party for three hours, so I was here for that. That was a lot of fun. And then um, I had to go to the store, get some candy because we ran out and uh, went home, got some. I forgot my. Now I'm thinking about it. I have eggs, hard boiled eggs upstairs because I don't know if Carrie said, but I am carnivore seven days now. So my snack was four hard boiled eggs, but I forgot them upstairs. Is, is any of our children watching and they can run the eggs down the stairs? No, because Alyssa is the only one upstairs. These are going to drive me nuts. Did she change the sign over? Yes, her and David did. So shout out, our there. cousin David is helping uh, with the movie theater and Alyssa are upstairs. They just changed the sign over to next week's movie, mm -hmm. which there was some confusion on. Nope. What a scramble. I, I was told the next movie was Cabrini, but it's Dune 2. Nope. Ordinary Angels. See? Where's have you guys me? have you guys seen Ordinary Angels? I think that was one of my movies that I liked the most out of the last 10 movies that you and I went to preview. Yeah, it was very... It's like and a Cabrini. Those were two really good. Cabrini was really good. good movies. If you guys haven't seen Ordinary Angels, it is a sleeper. It was a very well done movie based on a true story. But we're not here to talk about movies today. We're here to talk about carnivore. But the girls are upstairs. Or Alyssa's upstairs Alyssa's with David. Upstairs. Well, David left. Changing the sign, watching the concession area. Uh, so before we jump into some questions, Adam Nicholas said the five stages video from this morning was fantastic. I think I watched it four times. Wow. wow. Thank you, Adam. In my 18 months carnivore, I would echo all those same thoughts. I did this video six months ago, the five stages of carnivore, and it was very popular. And my buddy JT is like, you should do an updated version. I'm like, I do have additional thoughts. When I did that video, it was just on a whim. I'm like, oh, this is, what are we going to do today? All right, set up the camera. And we just riffed. So I added more. I updated. It's the revised version. And there's more thoughts on like what you can expect in these different five stages of carnivore diet. So I launched that video this morning. Thank you for your nice words, Adam. I really appreciate that. Uh, I posted this. Please post questions with the QQQ, Carrie and Jen. Best question gets a ribeye on Jen. Right, Jen? So if you see Jen next time and you say, I asked that really good question, she will personally hand you a ribeye. We got Lynn Tucker Carnivore in the chat. Charger Mopar, Rick. Limitless Lindy. How's it going, Lindy? Oh, Nick Jennings. Nick has an incredible story. Looking forward to talking to him some more. All right, here we go with some questions. Who's your carnivore, Brett? Always with the good questions. Well, before we take the question, why don't we just talk? Where are we at? What are we doing? You're seven days. So You're seven yes. days carnivore. You seven days now. Yes. So I worked here at the theater last week and I decided last week that I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to be me. I want to be healthier, be here for my family, be here for Carrie, go on vacations, be able to go swimming and feel good about myself and just be healthy. So that's where I'm at. So it's, it's step by step. I've, I've tried keto. Yes, I did really good with keto, but then I failed multiple times. So I said, you know, what? I'm going to start something else. So I'm just put the finger down. I will pinch it Shh, off. I, say one thing. I will pinch it off. Can I say one thing? I told I, you so. You didn't do keto. I did keto. Remember we lost a bunch of weight. What was it keto? That was keto. We We're gonna, I lost this is gonna be pounds. This is gonna be couples marriage therapy. You guys ready for this? Let's go. You didn't do keto. I, I'm gonna do a video on this. I'm not I'm not judging you. There's keto and there's low carb. You did low carb. Keto means you're eating fat and you're getting into ketosis, and your body's in a, a level state of ketosis. He's right. Low carb is eating salad with seed oil dressings on it and soup from the gas station that's got low carbs in it but you're not in ketosis it's different thank you okay i'm not being mean i wasn't in I, keto i was thin. on low carb yes he's right i had salads and i did really well i lost about 70 pounds and then obviously it gained it all back plus this was more. years ago we're talking yes, about now we both ago. did we you, went to alaska the first time we went to alaska and we got a do you have the picture I, on your first phone and only eye time yes, this was I a do. long time ago we had our picture taken. We were like this, mm -hmm. and we were so proud of ourselves, and we lost all of our weight. And was it hard to lose all that weight, Jen, on low carb? Uh -huh. And it took a long time. And we were doing P90X, and we were exercising and hiking. You remember all that? Are you looking for the picture? I'm looking. I don't think she's going to find it. She's looking for the picture. This is the picture I've referenced before that I have nightmares about because I remember 
so vividly saying it was such a wonderful vacation and opportunity to go on. And that was like our last vacation in 10 years because then we got our homestead and we got goats and chickens in the movie theater. We'd never go on vacation again until just recently. We had our picture taken. I got one little picture. It's not that, but. Oh, that's a little earlier. Me and the girls, the triplets. That's not it, but when I see my babies. <laughs> we were on this vacation and we, I remember so vividly looking at this picture afterwards and saying, we are never going to gain this weight yeah. back again. And we worked so hard because we did it wrong. We did it wrong. We were trying to exercise our way to weight loss. I'm sorry. Here's another one. That's a little guys, earlier one. It's a little, a little uh, hard to see, but yeah. So it proves that we were together when we were 14. Focus. <laughs> that is when we were 14 years old. See, I wasn't that big then. I no. that was when I was that was I was 14 with the mustache. You like the 14 year old mustache there? Yeah, it was. <laughs> After that, oh, that picture was taken in 14 at 14. Going through high school, that was when my weight really started to climb. I remember I got my first job at McDonald's, started eating a bunch of fast food. Every penny I would get from uh, paychecks would just go towards food. But anyhow, Jen and I took that picture after we lost a whole bunch of weight, doing keto and exercising and doing it the wrong way. Never going to gain the weight back, and it was. A couple months later, we gained all the weight back and then more and then more and then more. And then we yo-yoed up and down a thousand mm -hmm. times after that. Random Hoot House Imp is saying, hello, Carrie. Is your wife carnivore or keto? She is carnivore right now. She is carnivore for how many days? Seven. How's it going? It's not bad. I'm really, he yells at me, but I really, when I don't eat when I'm not hungry and he yells at me. So I'm not really hungry. I yell at you. Yes, he does. He just tells me I need to eat more. I need to eat more fat. And it's true, but I'm not going to eat if I'm not hungry. So you shouldn't eat if you're not hungry. But I eat a lot of um, I, I eat a lot of eggs and I put uh, ground beef with it, too. So like every morning I'll make a, well, he'll normally make the breakfast for everybody. Uh, scrambled eggs and lots of butter uh, or no. What is that? What is it? Tallow? I cooked the scrambled eggs in beef tallow, yeah. which we got. This is going to be marriage counseling. You guys aren't going to like us after this one very much. You, should we tell them about our argument we had this morning or no? I don't care. She wanted me to. She wanted to do separate eggs this morning because she just said she didn't like the tallow. I would literally take this. I got this Wagyu beef tallow. I take a spoonful of it. I do a lot more with fried eggs, but with scrambled eggs, I just put a little spoonful of it in there. And then I made about 30 eggs this morning, Very scrambled good. them up. 30 scrambled eggs. I'm like, you're going to taste the tallow mixed in with 30 scrambled eggs. Well, she relented and then she ate it with the tallow because I'm not yelling at you. You got to eat more. My worry is you're not eating enough fat. My worry is that you did this before six months ago or so. I told you, I and you started saying, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. And then you stopped eating and then you failed and then you quit. And then you said, I'm going to just go do keto now. Is that zoomed in? Can you show the whole thing or no? That's it. That's all I got. That's 10 years ago? Well, what show it says, 2016. 2016. Ah, oh, they can't see. This isn't a good way to do it. But not, but there it is. But we both lost a lot of weight. That was after what? Two years on keto, doing mm -hmm. P90X, exercising, like struggling and fighting for every pound to go off. And still in that picture, I was probably 40 pounds heavier than I am right now. But I was still so happy about it. I don't remember seeing that one. That was when I had my uh, Abe Lincoln beard. They can't see that anyway. So so you're doing carnivore now. Like you were saying, I'm sorry, go ahead. They're going to yell at me because I'm talking too much. Put the phone down. You, oh, you can't see pictures can't anymore. What, what have we been doing for seven days? What have we been eating every single morning? Uh, eggs and uh, ground beef. I've been, I've been, I, I went on to, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting what it's called. My my brain is still foggy. I'll admit that. So I, I you just joined, joined a group. A group. Bella's Steak and Butter Game. Thank you. I joined that group. I've been asking a bunch of questions. There's a bunch of awesome people on there that've been helping me. I do have meat aversion still, and I will admit, I will admit that it's mostly in my head. But all of my life, I didn't like meat. I didn't like the taste, the texture, the smell, anything. And when I did carnivore before, I legitimately got nauseous when he would make food i had to go in the other room i starved myself for a week i couldn't take it so now i'm doing what they told me is take baby steps eat a little bit here and there take a bite of carrie's steak take a bite of somebody else's steak another day you know do it slowly baby steps is how they all said how to do it so that's what i'm gonna try my go-to is eggs i eat a lot of eggs and i'm afraid i'm gonna start getting sick of those but we have eggs all all day like yesterday i had a burger with uh four 
four eggs on top. I'm sorry. <laughs> so like a, four eggs is nothing. But it's not like a fatty. I four eat, eggs. I eat like eight eggs at a time. Um, four eggs is nothing. But it's been going really good. Um, I'm proud of myself. I'm, I'm, oh my goodness. Can I say this? Okay. So I know I'm overweight. I'm working on it, but more or less my health. Two things. My back has been killing me for the last month. It, <laughs> stop with the finger. Sorry. Sorry. Absolutely killing me the last month and a half now with my back and she's I, not exaggerating is what i was going to say like no, she was going to go to the hospital it was hurting so bad and i'm like really it's inflammation it was really painful so i went to a friend's house they tried doing stuff to me i was going to go to a massage therapist it was really bad but it's inflammation my back feels 95 percent better right now i can walk i can go outside and do stuff like a normal person and um the other thing is i want to say is my legs, my my ankles. When I was pregnant with the triplets, my ankles, no no kidding, looked like Shrek. It was terrible. They were so big, and they were hard as and a they rock. Were hard. And now, for the last couple of years, that's how my feet have been. And, and they gave been, you stuff to like water, water pills, water yes, pills to get rid of all the inflammation and all that stuff. But my point is, is even though it's only been seven days, my ankles and my feet are back to where they're supposed to be, and I'm sorry, but like the part, how do you call that part in your leg? I don't know. Okay. From like your knee to down to your ankle. I'm sorry. That was rock hard. I was so happy. I'm like, Carrie, look at Jacob's today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. <laughs> so, but I felt really good because the inflammation went away. I haven't had a soda in a week now. And you don't know me, but I used to drink three to four sodas a day. So I'm drinking a lot of water. I'm eating a lot better. I'm sleeping better. I feel better. I go to sleep later. Like I'll go to like before I used to go to bed at like eight, nine o'clock, like old lady. Now I go to bed at 12, one and I'll still wake up a little bit later, you know, eight, nine, but they want me to talk. That's just me making a note. Keep going. No, go ahead. You're doing good. I was going to say, you were snoring so bad for so long. You'd pass out at like eight, nine o'clock at night. We've been up till midnight, like every night now. Mm -hmm. You got more energy. Mm -hmm. And your inflammation that you were talking about, your back hurting and your legs. How long were your legs like that for? Years. This The only reason I'm trying to re repeat this is because you need to like make a note of this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just like, oh, my legs are fine now. Then that's the new normal. No, for years, your legs, you were getting water pills and you were going to the doctor and they're going to give you these special stockings that are always bothering you. My it's the truth. Well, for years. And now in seven days, it's gone. Mm -hmm. You got to you gotta appreciate that. That's the one thing with humans that drives me nuts. We don't appreciate it. Okay, I'll be quiet now. What else, Jen? I'm done for now. Seven days. Mm-hmm. How's the Bella Steak and Butter Gang doing for you? I've just been reading a lot of people's posts on there. There's coaches, which I found out, but they're kind of expensive. So maybe I'll just keep talking in the chat area, but everybody's really great. But there. they have Zoom calls you you can join. Yes. So I missed one last week because I was in pain. So I was going to do, there was a Zoom call with Dr. Hampton, which would have been really fun to do. You can ask questions beforehand. And then if he gets to them on time, he would have read them online. Um, didn't get up to that. No more Dr. Finger. No, Dr. Berry. I'm reading. This. He's Just scrolling. keep talking. I'm, I'm <laughs> checking the comments. Um. So, yeah. So I joined a couple of groups uh, on Facebook and everybody's just been really great because, you know, I'm not the only one that's out there that's struggling or is struggling or has struggled or is overweight. So um, as hard as it is to say, I appreciate that other people have been there and they can help me. Because from coming from a woman's standpoint, it's a lot harder for him to understand some things when I can just talk to somebody who's been in the same boat. So, Yes. And this community is amazing. You should read some of these comments. My goodness. So supportive. I got to read a few of these. You all are really seriously. Like you make me feel so much better. Like, Oh, Jen, you're beautiful or your hair looks good or whatever. It's like, I don't feel that way. I've never felt beautiful or pretty or anything. So when you guys say that, it's very nice. What you said earlier is you have to take baby steps. I a hundred percent agree. And if you get sick of meat, you just take a break or you fast or you do something. My only worry is what did you do last time that you fell off? 
you were just like, you stopped eating. That's not a baby step. Yeah, you quit and you're like, oh, my eat. stomach hurts. And then you stopped eating. And then you're like, I'm just going to fast for a while. And then like five days went by mm -hmm. and then you started getting sick. And then you're like, oh, this is just miserable. But you made it worse than it had to be. Okay. One thing. Somebody said outdoor Katie. Katie, are you on here? Yes, she is. Oh, hi, Katie. Emma, probably. Maybe Alyssa. This is a huge one. I said this to... <laughs> I said this to Jen too. Okay, I'm going to stop. Jen, please take 360 selfie pics as soon as possible. Even if you never, I said this exact same thing to you. Even if you don't even show it, just do it on your own phone when you, also measurements. After you lose 100 pounds, you will want them, I promise. Did yeah. you do it? Are you doing it now? No. Yeah, you want me to do it now? She's going to do it right now, guys. <laughs> I'm just checking my phone because Lily was going to stay here. So I'm just on my phone talking to Lily upstairs. Why is Lily here? I thought Alyssa was here. She wanted to go home because she doesn't like being here alone. And David, my cousin, left. So um, she was up there alone. Who's your carnivore, Brett? What's Jen's typical carnivore meal? Congrats on seven days, Thank you. Jen. I, like I said, it's mostly my, my go-to is eggs. Like he'll be, he was eating a steak yesterday, I think. Every and day. He, well, yes, every day. But when I was there, he was eating it and he gave me a piece. So I ate then. I mean, it is slow. So I mean, you have been eating a lot of burger patties. I, have, I do have meat aversion. Like I went out with my aunt a couple days ago. We went to Culver's, of course, Culver's again, but uh, I had four burger patties. Sorry. So normally my go-to is, is Culver's. She keeps, she's worried that she, people are going to say she's fat if she has four burger patties mm -hmm. from Culver's. Those are little tiny pucks. Mm -hmm. That's, that's child's play. I would eat 10 of those in, in for lunch. I know. That's like your whole day. Four patties is nothing. Those aren't even quarter pounders. If you go to McDonald's, get quarter pounders are bigger. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with four patties. Okay. She's been eating a lot of patties, Brett. Lots of burger patties with eggs on them. You still have yet to try the bacon, but baby steps. It just I it, it drives me absolutely insane that she says she doesn't like bacon. She literally had it 10 years ago, and it was artificial bacon bites on a salad. You guys can feel my pain, right? Oh, it'd be so much easier for you if you had bacon. I know. Burger patty, egg, a little crunchy bacon. I found a little piece of bacon too, and I found the most perfect little piece of bacon with nothing. There was no, like, it wasn't like a big fatty piece, perfect texture, everything. I put it just on the corner of her plate. She chucked it at the dog. I'm not ready. But you ate the ground beef. Baby steps. And you ate the egg, so that's good baby steps. <laughs> Ribeye Ranger said, outdoor Katie. Hey, Katie, I went kayaking and fishing three days ago. Thought about you making those kayak Aww. videos. That's awesome. I, I can't wait. It was close today. Katie and I were outside grilling and the sun was out, but it was just too cold. Although Katie went golfing today, so yeah, she could have went kayaking, I guess. Her and David went golfing. Nourishment reacted. Ellie, today was a gorgeous day. We deep cleaned our house after had a bad stomach oh, virus, yeah. feeling strong and back to kick butt. Carnivore for the win. Glad you're we feeling feel better. better. Yeah. She's down in Florida. My, nice. Oh, Ellie, I don't I don't remember what part of Florida you're in, but my dad is in Florida too. I was just talking to him earlier today. He's mm -hmm. in central Florida, about a half hour from Orlando. He's coming home soon though, right? Do you know May. when he's coming back? Middle of May. Oh, a little Debbie's while. Debbie's birthday is May 25th. My, my birthday is May He's 20th, a snowbird. So. That's what they call him. He's a snowbird. So he used to come back early April. Now he's coming back May because he doesn't want any snow. I'm like, there's no snow in May. Oh, here we go. This is from the earlier one. Jen, why do you free range those goats? I mean, is that a serious question? Yes, I was complaining about it earlier because there's little cocoa pebbles all over my grilling area and the goats come and knock my grill over. And Okay, yes, that's true. Okay, here's a couple of reasons. They're animals. They should be free. They uh, are, are don't cost me anything if I have to, if I don't have to pay them, hay, if I don't have to buy hay so they can just go in the free range. They they eat like all the stuff screws the yard you know like the all the charcoal and stuff that we haven't worked on they eat charcoal they eat screws and they try to eat Charcoal's the corner of my grill they eat cardboard boxes Charcoal's that are left out for them they they're animals I like I'm a compassionate animal lover so I like my animals to free range why would you free range chickens then so they can I, go around and eat bugs and do their job. Well, goats have the opportunity to or shut up or I'm going to leave. That's funny because the chickens do free range and they're cool because they'll eat ticks and bugs. The goats free range. And if there's like a loose screw on the ground, they'll eat a metal screw. Uh, oh. They'll knock the grill over. The last week they ate a whole bag of charcoal. They opened the whole bag of charcoal up. They ate the paper off the charcoal That's wrapper. And then there was charcoal all over the ground. This is an interesting conversation. Some of you might have been on my earlier live stream where I mentioned this, but um, we may be uh, on a reality TV show possibility 
There's this show called, maybe I shouldn't even talk about this. I don't know. There's this show called Homestead Rescue with Marty, the guy with the big white beard. Some of you may have seen it. They contacted us and are maybe interested in coming to rescue our homestead, which Jen would say, oh, we don't need rescuing. If they heard her story about how she free ranges goats and they're eating charcoal and screws and we've named all of our pets, they would be over here to rescue us immediately. That's rule number one is you don't name your livestock. No, Those are pets. you don't name the ones you're going to murder. That's what they said. Well, it, times get rough. <laughs> times get rough. No. We're feeding male no. goats for no reason for nine years now. So that could be interesting. Shout out. We got to get intro music for my buddy, Bill Knott. Hi, Bill. Bill, what do you say about free-ranging goats? He's going to take your side. Be nice, Bill. Free-ranging goats. They, the goats go around and they knock my grill over. And there's yeah, little, I understand that. There's yes, grill. Understand. There's there's goat cocoa pebbles I everywhere. I understand that. Little turds yeah. everywhere, millions of them. Every I like going for walks, and they're with you. They're like dogs. They like. Then you take them for a walk, you. and you put them back when you're done. Then you feel bad because they only have a little this bit is... of a space, and then they can go out and do whatever they want. This video is totally turning stuff. into a uh, couples therapy. Back to the topic at <laughs> hand: carnivore live stream. Also, family. How is it with the whole family on carnivore now? Talk about that, Jen. Mm -hmm. You're kicking me. Go. Cool. They want to hear you. I talk enough. You guys know I don't like All six of us. The that. girls, everyone's doing it. Yes, everybody's doing really great. I, I'm very proud of the girls. Um, they've been sticking to it. And um, you can definitely tell it changed them, especially from the girl aspect, if you guys know what I'm talking about. So um, it's definitely a change there. It's changing their attitude where I'll say, you know, one of the girls go do this. One of the girls go do that. Normally it was, oh, I don't want to do it now. I'm, I'll do it later. I'm tired. I hurt, whatever. But now it's more, okay. So that's a big difference for me is they not listen more, but they, they're, they they're got more active. Zen, carnivore Zen. Yes, they're more active and they like to do more things, which is really cool. And they're looking forward to summer and going out and um, riding bikes and stuff and a lot archery. of the kids to the yeah, they were all doing archery. A lot of kids these days are just like on their phones or something. You got to beg them to go out, but no, they've been doing really well. I will say it's been the best part is having family meals together every single day. That was the biggest nightmare before. Oh, Jen's doing her keto diet. Katie's doing counting calories. Emma's doing one meal a day and she can't eat until two o'clock. And every time we'd have a meal, it was just like, okay, I'm just going to go eat by myself now. Now we're eating every meal together. That is a huge change for sure. Give my phone back, please. They didn't, I just they didn't see that. See if Lily texted. Is she bit? So that 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 has been huge. The other thing that has been huge um, that I really am happy about is Katie and Emma, in particular. Uh, they're getting angry. Have you noticed that? Emma and Katie. Yeah. They're starting to do more of this research. So we watched, I talked about this before. We watched this movie, Dark Waters with Mark Ruffalo that talks about the forever chemicals in uh -huh. DuPont and how every human, Katie's like, wait, I got these forever chemicals in my body because this greedy company put it out into the world and now they're going to be in my body forever. I'm like, yep. And then she started doing research on it and she's getting really fired up. Then uh, someone on the chat suggested you guys should watch Aaron Brockovich. And I was like, yeah, that's a good one for the girls, good female character. So mm -hmm. a couple of days ago, we watched Aaron Brockovich. They're getting and they're getting fired up now. Emma's looking at suntan lotion. I think she's doing a video. I don't know if she launched it yet. She's yeah. I read her stuff. She was doing it with suntan lotion, and she was just terrified because her and I both have very light skin. He's a little bit darker than I am, and she and I both have light skin. So when she used to go out in the sun, even for five minutes, she would she and I would both burn like crazy. But last year when she was kind of carnivore, but not really, but kind of was. Um, she didn't burn like he, I mean, she burned, but it wasn't like if I would go out and I would burn, I would be sore. I would be, I couldn't stand it. But now that she's carnivore, she can go out and she'll like tan. She's never been able to tan before. So she really liked that. So she did, um, I don't know if she did it or not yet, but she did a slideshow on the chemicals and stuff that were in the sunscreen. And she was just blown away. And she's like, mom, you put that on me. And I'm just like, I feel like an awful mom. I'm like I did all those chemicals that give you cancer and give you horrible, horrible stuff. So I'm very proud of her too. I will say she's been reaching out to companies and companies have been sending her stuff. So she got a couple of bottles. Um, I forget what's in it. Tallow. I was going to say that. Um, 
other than tallow, I don't remember what was in it, but she said she swears by it. Like her hands are really nice and soft. She said it smells really wonderful. So uh, definitely check that out on there. And also with Katie, she's been doing really amazing too, like book reports and stuff and, and doing the, like you said, the chemicals on the pots and pans. She's, they're very fired up about this. My point was this, like before they're like, oh, this carnivore thing's cool. But now they're like, no, the fact that we're getting poisoning ourselves for years and years and we didn't know it through the foods we're eating and through suntan lotion and chemicals and all this other stuff they are more interested and passionate about carnivore now for their own health and going forward in the next generation which is very very encouraging to me they're like before when they were tinkering with carnivore it was more like oh i could lose some weight oh my acne will clear up but now it's it's deeper than that so that's pretty cool um again shout out bill not Bill, we got to get you some intro music. You know, like Elvis has entered the building. Bill mm -hmm. has entered the building. Nourishment redacted. Oh, here's a great question. Ellie, you get it. You get you want a ribeye. Uh, Jen, great to see you. How are you going to do carnivore differently this time? I hope you enjoy the food and don't have to fast for so long. Actually, I enjoy fasting. I feel better when I do it. Like he, uh, he was always like, what are we going to eat in the morning? We're going to eat at nine or 10. And I'm like, I don't eat till one or two. I feel better that I'm not eating. I feel like I have more energy. So I actually love fasting. Uh, last week when I started, I actually started last Saturday. I ate, I don't remember what I ate exactly on Sunday. I ate some meat and some eggs Monday. I didn't eat at all. And then I didn't eat until Tuesday that afternoon and I felt great. And then it's like, gets all your toxins and all the crap out of your body. Um, so I actually like to fast a lot. What I would do differently is like what he said and what everybody else has been telling me eats, you know, eat slower, um, kind of introduce things slowly and then, um, just eat when I'm hungry before it was, I would eat all the time when everybody else was eating. Now I kind of want to eat when I'm hungry and baby steps. So I think that's definitely what I'm going to do different this time. And more fat. And more fat. Baby steps to more fat. It's all it should be called fativore, not carnivore. Mm. Victoria asked Jen, how are you feeling so far? I think better. I'm actually for some reason I think I'm better. You think? For some reason I'm actually tired throughout the day. I don't know if that's just cuz I'm not getting enough fat or what, but uh, I work a lot, so maybe I'm just kind of wearing myself out. I don't know. I'm always doing something here at the theater, doing, you know, work at home for something or so. You have been staying up a lot later th than before, though, mm -hmm. and you're sleeping way much better. So much way better. Much better. Ooh, so much better. Way much better. She was, she was, I'm sorry, but before I, I can say this because you said the same thing about me. She was a maniac. When she would sleep, violently tossing and turning and snoring. Admit, about every 20 minutes, oh, I, would she's wake just like up, this. I would wake up and I would toss and I would sleep on my side. And then I would wake up and toss oh, and sleep on violent. my side. violent. So, I was yes, scared. I agree with that. And, you know, I thank you guys so much. He's going through the comments. You you all are so amazing. It's like he said, you guys are like families. You guys are so amazing. People are saying, stick with it. You look beautiful. Keep going. Just like, you know, all those really are very helpful because sometimes, you know, you have a hard day and – you work hard. And you're like, oh, I want to sit down and, you know, have a soda or something. I've never drank my life. I never really, I never smoke. So it's like my go-to was fattening crappy food or soda. So now it's like, I need to find another go-to to get to, I guess. Like if I, I did, I forgot our water. We got a little sip. In. And we got to stop doing the water bottles too. That's another thing. We can't have water uh, upstairs, but I've been drinking and downing a lot of water. Yeah. Yes, baby steps. Don't beat myself up. I know. We got in a little argument the last time because I took your, I took, we were getting out of the car and I took her uh, diet root beer. This was before you went carnivore, mm -hmm. a couple days before she went carnivore. I took her diet root beer mm -hmm. and I chucked it as hard as I could into the woods. It was probably a bad thing. It's not sitting out in the woods. I haven't had a soda in a, in a week. and I. Do you have good. no withdrawals from soda? Do you have a caffeine addiction? Did you get a headache? How did yes, that I go? Did. That was very, very bad. Sorry, I'm turning the heat on. I'm freezing. All right, I want to start, we yes, start going. I had a really, really bad migraine. I I had like a, what was I going to say? A bad word. Uh, <laughs> what bad word were you going to say about a migraine? You're going to swear? I had a threesome. What? <laughs> but I, that's what I was going to say. It didn't come out right. So I had a really bad migraine. My back was killing me. And I'm sorry, it was that time of the month. So I had everything, the triple threat. I had everything going wrong, and that's the 
day I started carnivore. So I had the caffeine withdrawal, the, the sugar withdrawal, kind of everything three at once. So that was that was pretty bad. You made it through. I did. I'm fine now. I mean, I'm, when you suffer, I am craving my soda. Yes, but I don't. Oh, it's so bad for you. I know. That's why I'm not. I just want to say. I just want to say real quick. Every now and then in life, you meet an incredible individual. Remember I said that before? Thank you. And here we have Robin Heron, carnivorous grandma. Oh, yes. I love her. She, where did I talk to her before? I was talking to her. You didn't get to meet Robin, but no, she I came out to the her, Chicago meetup. I was meetup. talking to her on here. Robin's the best. She just did Maybe. a video with my buddy Adam today. I think it was, we guys did a live stream. I caught a little bit of it before we had to come to the movie theater. Hmm. I mean that sincerely, though. Of Most of the people in here, who's your carnivore, Brett? I don't know what it is with these carnivores, but you meet them, you're like, darn it. That person is just a good person. Mm -hmm. Darn it. I want to be a better person. I want to be like Robin. Right. I want to be like Brett. Robin yeah. is awesome. Robin's got a great YouTube channel, too. He's been doing some awesome interviews. I still love the interview. She did it. Robin did an interview with Dr. Barry and Nisha together. I don't think that's been done before. It was a wonderful interview. Awesome conversation. One thing really quick, I see 482 people. My gosh, guys, thank you so much. Would you mind going and liking and thumbs up and hearting and all that to that video? What this video? video? This this live stream. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm new to Just this. Say, go yet. to Robbins and like okay. Robbins. Now this is calling me. A&M Machines, $5 super chat. Guys, one second. How many pull-ups can you do? Has carnivore made you stronger or even okay. smarter? We are eight days carnivore. We have done it before. All right, Jen's going to be right back in two seconds. I'll be back. This is the life of parents of triplets. Yeah. They knew we were doing a live stream and we have 14 interruptions. How many pull-ups can I do? Um, I don't know. To be honest with you, and I'm always honest, probably less than I could at, after I did my eight-day fast, which is so counterintuitive. I did an eight-day fast with Jeff DeProspers, and every day I challenged myself to do more push-ups. I think by the, by the end, I was doing like 12 on day eight with no food or no water. So probably like around 12. Uh, then when winter in Wisconsin came and I started making excuses, I wasn't getting out. I used to go outside and do it all the time. So uh, I have to start doing more. I've been doing a little bit here or there, but um, has Carnivore made you stronger in every way possible? Uh, mentally and physically, I believe so. Yes, I could barely stand up before Carnivore. Uh, I had brain fog and fatigue and I, I could barely get through the day. We're eight days carnivore. We have done it before. Uh, you got it. You can do it. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. All of that 100% goes towards the documentary. So Susan Hampton, who had the first crush, Jenner Carey? I'm going to come back. That's a great question. I'm going to come back to that one, Susan. Who's your carnivore? Gifted five Homestead How memberships. Oh, my goodness. What is going on with these membership gifts? Thank you so much for that. Uh, the membership is really growing on the channel, and I really appreciate that. Again. Every single penny goes to the documentary uh, because of those memberships. We do a members-only live stream every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. I'm doing a lot more members-only content. We did a couple of videos when we went to film Dr. Ken Berry. So, Oh, man, we got – what the heck? Sandra, come on. Five more. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so grateful, so thankful, so blessed. Uh, both of you, Sandra, Brett, you guys are too nice and too generous. And always so kind in the comments. I really appreciate it. All right. A couple of these comments are for Jen. So she will be back here in a minute. Here's a question for Carrie. Andrea, Carrie, how many times a day do you eat? Uh, I always caution people, don't worry about what other people do. But I'm going to answer your question just because everyone's different at different stages. If you asked me this question six months ago, it would be a different answer that I'm giving you right now. Right now, I eat twice a day. For a very long time, 60 days on my carnivore journey, I did lion diet and I ate once per day. Um, now I just eat. So I eat twice a day. Sometimes if it's like later and we're getting home late from the movie theater, I'm hungry. I'll eat again. I just eat when I'm hungry and I just listen to my body. That is the beauty of eating a proper human diet. Before I was confused and I thought I was always hungry because I was addicted to sugar and it was like sugar, sugar, sugar. Give me more. Give me more. And I was eating when I wasn't hungry. On carnivore. If I'm hungry, my body tells me the truth. I listen to my body and I eat a little bit more. And if I can't or I don't, it ain't that big of a deal. I could just fast until the next day. It's not like those crazy, intense sugar cravings we used to have. 
Carrie turned me on to eating uh, egg yolks as a side dish. Oh, there you go. What the heck is going on? You have gone mad. Gone mad. I don't know how many Homestead Hall memberships you've given away. I can't thank you enough. I, I got a, 10 ribeyes for gone mad. This is like you're making a new record here. Every live stream, you're gifting more memberships. I really appreciate that. So everyone that's on here, there's almost 500 people on here right now. Jen's going to be right back. She just had to help Alyssa with something. Check your email after this, and you may see in your inbox a free membership to Homestead How. Thank you to Gone Mad, Sandra, One Hope for All, Brett, Who's Your Carnivore. Those are all going to get dispersed out randomly, so you might have a free Homestead How membership. If you do, you can join us every Thursday for the members-only meetings. You can shoot me emails if you got questions. I am extremely loyal person, so if you're a member, I am there for you, whatever I can do. Uh, Carrie L. Love the name. Carrie L. Are you, is Carrie a man or woman? Just interested because usually that's how I spell my name. K-E-R-R-Y. It's very rare, but I have met a few male Carries over my years, including my father, senior. How many eggs do you average per day from your chickens? And how chickens do you, how many chickens do you have? Uh, I believe right now we have 10 chickens, nine or 10. And how many chick, how many eggs do we average per day from them? I couldn't even tell you. And I'm frustrated about it, as you can probably tell. I'm glad Jen's not here right now, or I'd give the Dr. Berry finger. But our chickens are free-ranging, and it's been an Easter egg hunt. They're laying eggs everywhere. And then you find an egg, you're like, is this thing six years old? I don't know. It's amazing that the chickens free-range. I'm not going to argue with Jen on that. They're eating the ticks and the insects, and they're doing their work. They're, they're good little workers. But it's a big part of my plan going forward is to organize this and have a specific chicken area for the chickens. I want to get more egg-laying chickens. I want to get meat chickens. We became homesteaders to be self-sufficient. We tried to grow a garden. That garden will never happen, and I don't, I'm don't. i never growing vegetables again. I have no interest. But I do have interest in being self-sufficient and hunting for meat, deer, and turkey, and raising my own meat. Uh, chicken, possibly pork. And ooh, cattle, beef, that would be that would be amazing. Um, how many do we get on average? The, the average number of eggs you get from chickens too varies drastically depending on the time of year. In the summer, when you get more sunshine, you get a lot more egg production. So it's it's also tricky for me to answer that question because we have an Airbnb. We have guests that stay on our property because they want to see what it's like on a homestead. And we always give them dibs on the farm fresh eggs. So a lot of times they'll be running around doing the Easter egg hunt or getting the eggs that are available out there. We got another gifted Homestead Hall membership from the Feral Grandma. Thank you again. You guys are amazing. Hey, while I have 500 people on here, if you have any more questions for Jen, I'm going to make sure. I, I just passed a whole bunch. I'm going to go back to JT and Carrie and Jen and Emma. Oh, you heard that right. All of us are going to be at a meetup, at a park. Let me pull this up for you guys real quick. We need more people to join us. We got a good group so far, but we don't have enough people yet. And this thing is coming up in like two weeks. It, if you're in Wisconsin, man, it's worth the drive. If you're near Milwaukee, I'm going to show you guys this on the screen here real quick. And then Jen should be back here in a second. I'm going to go back to some more of those comments and questions. Here we go. Thienesville, Wisconsin, April 13th. You got Carrie, you got Emma, you got Alyssa, you got Katie. Jen's going to be there. We're bringing a grill. We're bringing meat. We're going to have Healing Humanity shirts. We're going to be giving away bracelets. We're going to be going around with the cameras. JT's going to be there. His awesome son, William, his amazing wife, Anna. They're all going to be there. We got a bunch of carnivores coming in. And if you want to share your carnivore story, we're going to, I'll record it. I'll put it on the YouTube channel. If it's a good story, who knows? Maybe it could make it into the documentary. We are charging. It's $25, but kids are free. The reason we're charging is because we're renting the park out. So a, a good chunk of that goes towards the park. The rest of it, 100% goes towards the documentary. We're not trying to make any profits off of this whatever, whatsoever. We have a um, a little field trip we're going on afterwards. So we're, we're trying to start the event in the morning, um, 11 a.m. And ending around 3, 2 or 3. And then JT... His butcher shop is right down the road. And we went there when we did cooking for strangers, when we knocked on the doors of strangers. And I bought a huge ribeye roast from this Foxtown Heritage Meats. We're going to take a little field trip over there after if anyone wants to join us. 
Uh, it should be a blast, but we need more people. I think I, I think I booked this too close to the Montella one that we just had. So a lot of people are like, oh, I just went to the Montella one. Maybe I'll skip this one. We do have a decent size group so far, but we need more people. So anyone in Wisconsin or you want to drive up from Illinois, it's going to be a blast. It's a beautiful park. It's covered in case it rains out. There's stuff there for the kids. Oh, look, Jen's got some marshmallows. Am I too loud? You can hear me upstairs. I'm getting shushed. Jen, I was just telling them about the meetup that you're going to be attending with me and JT. Maybe. Oh, you're definitely going. I, April 13th. That's in like two weeks. Not next Saturday, the following. I'm busy, sorry. You're going to be there? Yes, I'll be there. You got to talk loud into the camera. I got to be quiet. So Jen's going to be there. Emma's going to be there. JT's going to be there. It's going to be a blast. I'll be there, JT, and I'll be there. Um. And like I said, it's going to be fun. It's We're not putting any pressure. If people want to share their story on camera, they can. We're going to have the camera, not have the camera. We're going to have games, Jenga. Someone's got a big Jenga thing they're bringing, like a huge a huge one. Uh, I had stuff upstairs we could bring. Frisbees, whatever. It's going to be a blast. I will tell you what. When we did the Montello Theater meetup, did you enjoy that? Well, you were kind of busy. I was busy, and my back was killing me. But I loved meeting uh, Alia and Brett and Adam. My gosh, I didn't get to meet him before. JT was there. A lot of really awesome people. So, yes, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun seeing Dr. Hampton on the screen. The best part for me was when you see – Jen's starting to get it right now. The carnivore glow. There is an energy – I'm telling you, I don't know what it is, but the carnivore energy, the carnivore zen, the carnivore glow, there is something there. And when you get a whole group of those carnivores together, it is electric. When I left, I'm like, yeah, this whole meetup, Dr. Hampton, amazing. Dr. Hampton is the best. But I was like, I just want more of this carnivore. I just want to hang out with other carnivores more. So that's what we're doing. It's on the 13th. Uh, we have, there's a free ticket still yet to be claimed. If any of you are interested, huge shout out. Sweetest lady in the world. Another person I'm so glad to have met, Lori from Carnivore Cheer. Donated $25 ticket out of her pocket. Very sweet. Thank you. And she's so generous, so nice of her. So if anyone wants that, you got to use it, though. Email me, homesteadhow.gmail.com. Jen, show us your little snack here, and then I'm going to get back because I I, uh, I I missed a couple of these comments that were for you. Show them right. what you got your snack on. Some marshmallows? What are we talking I, about here? Again, I feel like a fatty because I'm eating, but... They're, <laughs> they're eggs, but <laughs> I made myself my own little Redmond's keychain. What so do we got I, in there? Some I, people I, might not be familiar. So this is the Redmond's keychain. Where do I go? This one's the one that I picked for myself. Normally, it, okay, you can purchase these. All the funds will go towards the documentary. I send random ones out unless you specifically say, I want this kind. But then it comes with a little Redmond salt, and then you could take it with you. You can put it on your keychain. You can put it on your purse. You can put it wherever you want. So those are for sale on the site. Right. You, did you show them? You don't have to open the whole thing. No, I got to use it anyway. Uh, so you get a little travel size Redmond saying, we, we did this during the 24-hour live stream. Remember when I did a 24-hour live stream right from this very yeah, chair crazy. and it lasted over 27 hours? So you get a keychain and you can have the good, clean salt. Jen, do you know as a, as a relatively new carnivore, do you know why this salt is so good? Because it has all the minerals and stuff and they don't take it out. Yes, and the standard table salt that you have, mm -hmm. they put sugar in it, dextrose, okay. and they bleach it, and it's right. junk and everything. So I'm sorry, guys. I haven't eaten. I'm going to just eat an egg in front of you. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I wouldn't do that, but okay. You don't. You wouldn't Jen, eat an egg in front of him? No. Who had the – you want to eat an egg in front of 455 people were watching? Do you guys mind if I have no, an go egg? Go for it. I'm just, just joking. I'm just skull, joking. No, I'm just joking. Who had the first crust, Jen or Carrie or Mutual? Now put an egg in your mouth and then answer the question. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I think it was her, if I'm being honest. we got to be honest. I thought you were nuts. <laughs> Let's not go there. Yes, I, 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 it was through his cousin, my best friend at the time. I got to get closer again. Jeez. Um, the swivel chairs. <laughs> That's why I'm taller than you, too. I'm really not taller than he is. Uh, my cousin... His cousin was my best friend, and, she, and he just happened to be coming into town that, that weekend, which was the weekend after Christmas. And um, she didn't tell me that I was meeting him. So I kind of just went to the mall, and I met him there. And I saw um, my cousin or his cousin coming towards me, and then a really cute guy. So Who was that? And some other person that wasn't you guys. And then I walked around him? <laughs> yeah. And the rest is history? Mm-hmm. 
almost 30 years, guys, has been ups and downs and downs and ups. Tell me about the time that I uh, tried to stay with you when my mom kicked me out of the house and I ran away and I bought a tent and I, I lived in a tent by that. the railroad tracks. I don't want to think about that. That was nuts. My parents were divorced, so I was – my parents were divorced, so I was visiting my mom on the weekends. And I was driving from Madison to Milwaukee to visit my mom, and I could only stay for the weekend, and then Jen lived by my mom. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when I met Jen and we fell in love. I said, I want to stay with my mom now. I want to live with my mom and child support, whatever issues. And she's like, no, you got to go back with your dad. So I bought a tent. Remember that? Yes, we do. And I ran away from home at age 14. Mm -hmm. And I set my tent up next to some railroad tracks. And I lived in a tent for several days. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever going to run away from home and get yourself a tent, the only piece of advice I would have for you is you don't want to put it next to a railroad track. What is that? No, the sleep was horrible. <laughs> and it was terrifying. It was weird too because this train track, you didn't know because you didn't go to the This train track, you'd walk down the train track at night. And the first night I did it, it was very cloudy and overcast. So there was no moon. It was, I could not see my hand. So I'm literally like feeling around trying to find where my tent is. Yeah. And then you get in the tent like this and you're 14 years old. I've never been away from my parents or my house. I'm just trying to fall asleep in the tent. And then all of a sudden you hear, you hear a stick crack. Mm -hmm. What the heck was that? Someone yeah. coming towards my tent? Yeah. And then right, it took me hours and hours and hours. I almost finally fell asleep. And then all of a sudden the earthquake happened. <laughs> the train going by. Those were the days. So uh, Jen had the crush first. Then it was me later. She was crazy. We were walking home. We were Did walking home. Say this again. We were walking home from the mall. And you, you kept, you kept walking into the, you kept walking into the road like you're going to get hit by a car or something. All right, we got some good comments for Jen. Jen, 95% improvement in your back. That's nearly miraculous. I know how debilitating back pain can be. It was really bad, yeah. I was ready to go to the doctor, but our insurance sucks, so I didn't go. Yeah. Jen, we are so happy for your progress. Thank you. Jen, you look beautiful. Yay. Ellie said, I never felt beautiful either, especially with my rosacea. Carnivore gave me confidence and cleared my skin. Emma says it a lot. Unfortunately, Emma is one of the girls that got a lot of acne, and she says it a lot. And when she did fall off the wagon previously, she says she could tell the difference on her face even within a day on how it helps. So I can I understand that. Jen, we went through the same things you do. We understand, and I personally want to encourage you. You're doing good, lady. Oh, thank you. We love you, Jen. You are doing the thing. I hope you are feeling less cravings, but it takes time. Be patient with yourself. You guys are I like that family. You guys are amazing. I like that comment about be patient because mm -hmm. this is what I always like to think about. I'm 43. For 42 years of my life, I abused the heck out of my body, putting in unnatural foods and chemicals and sugar. My body was in a state of constant inflammation and it mm -hmm. should have been. So to expect it in like one week to, oh, I'm perfect now. That's true. It's good. It, if it took like three we years, took, I should be happy. No, but you have to think how long it took us to get all this fat and inflammation and crap in our body. It's going to take us that long to get it out. Another great commenter, Sweet Nia's Life. I hope I said that right. She's left several great comments. Stick with it, Jen. It works. Thank you for that. Oh, here's a good one. Question. When will Jen start getting blood work? Well, as she just mentioned... Our insurance is horrible, which is kind of insane because we pay more. If we told people how much we paid for insurance, they'd, they'd throw up a little bit in their mouth. Since we're private, we own our own business. We have to pay for our own insurance. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely ridiculous. And we have like the lowest plan we can possibly get. How much are we paying right now? You really want me to say? Yeah. Twelve hundred just for both of us. Twelve hundred dollars a month we pay for insurance, and if she but wants our deductible to... is like fifteen thousand. Stop chewing on camera. I'm sorry, I'm hungry. Her deductible is fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. If you want to get blood work, basically, if you want to do anything, you get to pay twelve hundred dollars a month. If anything goes wrong majorly, you got to pay fifteen thousand dollars. I don't think that's right. Is that right? That is right. And if you want to get blood work or any test, you got to just pay for, for both it. of us. But it's nine thousand out of pocket for either of us. So either way, we'd have to pay $9,000. If you wanted to go get blood work, what would it cost? You just basically got to pay out of pocket? Whatever it would cost. And it, because it's a hospital and we're in America, it's probably some insane number. Probably a couple hundred dollars. Oh. Well, you can you can get blood work through private companies. I did that before. 
We should do that. We should both do that. <clears throat> but I, I want to get more than blood work. I want to get my um, ejection fraction tested. It's on my list for next week. Susan said, baby steps are good. Transition slowly is the best as you work on your journey for you. Yes. And another thing, the fat, you can't handle the fat, but you can handle butter. Mm -hmm. You've been doing good on the butter. Yes. Keep it with the butter then. Eggs, butter. Yeah. Ground beef patty, butter. Mm -hmm. Look at all of these. This, these people are crazy, Jen. This guy's gone mad. He's left so many homesteads. Did, did you know this whole program? You I can gift saw, memberships. Was it yesterday? Somebody gifted like 10 or 12 of them? I think it was gone mad. Gone mad has I gifted so. many Thank times over so and over much. again. That's amazing. Patty Foster. Hey, Patty. How's it going? I think I talked to you on email. So proud of you. You've always been gorgeous. So it's going to be amazing to see you at your final Thank goal. You. I appreciate that. The Feral Grandma gifted one homestead hell membership. Thank Greg you. H is a new member. Verdis, $2. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. And we have Navy Doc Charlie as another new member. Now I got to figure out where we left off on these comments. There's 488 people here. Thank you guys so much Hi, for everybody. all of the comments and the encouragement. Uh, I'm going to go super speed through these comments while Jen's going to keep talking. Oh, am I? So what do you guys have planned for Easter tomorrow? We're actually going. Did you talk about that? No, go for oh, it. I was upstairs, so I don't know. Uh, we're actually going to my aunt's house in Milwaukee. So it's like a two hour trek there. Um, but because all of them are, I don't know. I don't want to make fun of people normal and they don't eat like carnivores. Not abnormal. Um, there's going to be, and my aunt goes absolutely crazy with side dishes. Does she not? She has the, all the side dishes out. She has all of her best china. I mean, she spends hours. She spends weeks getting this taken care of. Um, so tomorrow, I'm going to be honest, it's going to be very hard for me because I love, I loved, I love, I love vegetables. And she always made this like um, broccoli casserole. And it was, oh, it was so good. I loved it. So that's going to be very, I'm going to be honest, it'll be very hard for me tomorrow because that was one of the things I loved. Also potatoes. Okay. I'm over that. Um, but it's going to be interesting tomorrow. So I hope all of you have a wonderful Easter with your family and um, eat the right stuff and do what makes you feel good. So we're bringing uh, chicken wings because his sister, Melissa, is coming. I'm very excited to see her because she's been doing carnival for a very long time now. Um, so she's coming. Uh, my side of the family will all be there, which will be really fun. Uh, so you're bringing, what are you bringing? So we're bringing um, chicken wings. Uh, pot roast. I, I like got turkeys, a... so we'll bring like a slow cooked tur turkey or something. Um, but yeah, I got pot roast today, so I'm gonna slow cook pot roast overnight. Big, huge roast, turkey, and I got yeah the chicken wings. So you're worried about going there? The best thing you can do. I'm not worried about going there. No, no. The, just... But the best thing you can do, mm -hmm. Bill, not. Bill not end of every video. I'm trying. Be kind. No, you well, you no. could be kind too. <laughs> Come on. He says three words. I made him a shirt and I can't. It remember starts what with it a P. Says. Come on, carnivore. Wow, I made him a shirt. Pra Prepare, prepare, prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Because on your ear. Oh my goodness. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Yes. If you're worried about anything, this event, the whole thing, then you prepare. You're like, oh, I got a whole plan. I got my eggs with me. I got my purse bacon with me. I got this meal that my I know I'm going to like. Purse bacon? Yes, purse bacon. Did he really just say purse bacon? Oh, my God. You see, this is – do you guys see what I'm dealing with here? She doesn't even know what purse bacon is. You cannot be a carnivore and not know what purse bacon is. Go grab my purse out of the car. You're weird. All right. I'm. I, wow, there's so many comments in here. Let's see. I'm, I'm, almost, I'm almost there. I'm not even close, am I? No. 750. Oh my goodness. All right, keep talking, Jen. I'm sorry, guys, that we don't answer everything. I normally am upstairs when he does live streams and I try to answer some questions on there. Thank you. Happy Easter to you too. Um I don't know. So what do you guys you guys have planned for tomorrow? Anything? Um should be going to church, but we're going to my aunt's house. She's a couple hours away. It's yeah. gonna be a long day. Um I was just kind of reading a comment. Yeah, I do intermittent fasting. I did really good doing that, to be honest with you. I did OMAD one meal a day, and then I would like count my calories in between there. That did really well for me, but then like everything, you fall off the wagon, and you're like kind of done for. So I did really well doing that, but I do good fasting because it makes my body feel a lot better. 
Um, you get all the toxins and stuff out of your body that you need to get rid of. So I would uh, tell anybody, if you're starting carnivore or if you just want to change, maybe try fasting for a day. I don't know. My, I always advise people, Jen, if you get in a rut. Everybody's saying, enjoy your egg. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was hungry. If you get in a rut, um, try fasting. It always helps. You guys slow down. I'm trying to read some of those. I don't, I I'm phone. still way far behind. I know. I'm sorry. I like reading everybody. I'll probably read all the comments after this because I love reading all of them. I actually did a um, uh, a short this morning when I was here at the movie theater, and I didn't really get to read all the comments. But I'll, you know, you always have that one jerk, and he he was you know it was true. I guess he was saying you know I was I was pointing at the popcorn machine, I was pointing at the candy, I was pointing at the soda, and he was like, "Well, why do you sell that?" Well, honestly, if we didn't sell that stuff here, we <sighs> I'm would be, so sick of this conversation. We would be broke. So I don't know, but thank you to everybody else who left really nice comments. I love doing that. I'm, yeah. I'm getting I think uh, less shy on camera. I guess the I thing with the popcorn, I'm gonna say it one last time. Mm -hmm. Should we just do a video on it? We sell popcorn and candy. We also sell pork rinds, grass-fed beef sticks, that, cheese yes. sticks. We sell other stuff. Mm -hmm. They're like, you're a hypocrite because you blame other places because they sell stuff. I honestly, 100%, I'm so torn. I feel bad. I'm like, should we just get rid of the movie theater? What else do we do? It's like you telling somebody to go to, you're going to go to Walmart. You really think that they're going to get rid of all the crap food that they have there just because you have people that can't control themselves? I don't know. My point is... You can't change other people. You can't change other people. So I'm putting my example out there. We're putting our example out there. I hope people will get the beef sticks. I hope people will get the, the pork rinds. And I hope they'll eat healthy like I eat. But I can't force them to eat that way. And if we say we're going to stop selling the candy and popcorn, people, this person was leaving a comment like we're raking in the money because of that. To be clear, I'm always honest with everybody. We haven't taken a single penny from this movie theater after running it for a year and a half now. Have we taken one penny? No. We haven't taken one we penny. We don't even pay our girls. We just the, give them the, the girls tips. get tips. We get they nothing. Get the tips that it's they... a passion project. This building has been here since 1859. So is that a valid excuse to give people junk food? No, it's not. If we don't sell the popcorn and candy, though, it will literally go bankrupt. So do we want to do that? And then, But then my question is, then what will happen? Those people will go to the other movie theater. They will go to the gas station, and they will buy the popcorn and the candy until they decide they want to change. I don't blame the grocery store for selling Doritos. The individual has to say, I'm done eating Doritos. I'm done eating ice cream. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I'm fired up about this because I am. I feel like a hypocrite. I feel bad when I'm giving a kid a little soda. I don't know what to do about it. It's like we, we made a commitment to the movie theater. We get rid of the movie theater. Someone else is going to do it. We stop selling the stuff. It goes bankrupt. People go somewhere else. Ultimately, though, if someone's going to smoke cigarettes, I can't, I could say you shouldn't smoke cigarettes. They're not going to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe they will see my example or they will see the documentary or they'll see Bill Knott's example and they're going to decide to change their own lives. I think that's the best I can do in the situation. Uh, you guys are probably sick of hearing this, but I still get the comments. I don't know if the people are just trying to push buttons or whatever. It works. You got me a little bit on that one. Normally you can't push my buttons. I, I just don't care, but uh, it does bother me, especially when there's little kids in here. I'm like, I'm just being a hypocrite right now. What am I going to do? Tell a kid you don't get, don't get soda or water. But, and then I go back in my head and I go through all this over and over again. And I'm like, I can't change other people. If we stop selling them, they're going to go somewhere else. I don't blame the grocery yeah, store. Exactly. I'm trying to inspire the individual to make a different decision. As long as we have a different option for them. Like I said, we have cheese, um, string cheese up there. We have the pork rinds. We have the keto what are those things called beef sticks um grass beef mean, sticks you have something in order for the we have the water like we have the spring water i mean we don't even buy the crappy water here um so we even have spring water for them here yeah so as you can see i'm torn on that one but wait i see my name a few times and you keep going back. i'm almost I, I'm, I'm putting them in here you know you put a little star on this i know but i keep seeing my name and i you keep going by it Sandra says, ignore those ignorant people who think you make money off of Montella Theater. And by ignorant, I mean exactly what the word means. Not knowledgeable about a particular matter. That is very true. It would be one thing. I would feel guilty if we were, like, we had a good night tonight. Mm -hmm. We're not, none of that money we will ever, we probably will never make any money off of this theater. There, people don't understand this. Movie theaters don't make anything. The $5 we sell the ticket for, 
like 80, 90% of that goes back to the studio. So we get like 70 cents out of a $5 ticket. Yeah. The concessions, we have the lowest price concessions in the state because we're trying to keep it fair for senior citizens and families. Our small popcorn is $2. You go to the AMC Marcus Theater, it's like $6 for the comparable popcorn. Yeah. So if we have any profit left at the end of the year, like last year, we put a new roof on the building. We upgraded the air conditioning system. And the building is from 1859. It's incredibly expensive to maintain the building. And then if there's anything left over that, that is for the slow months. Because we have slow months where we're not profitable at all. Where we're coming in here every single day knowing we're losing money. Mm -hmm. I'm not complaining. I'm thankful, grateful, and I'm blessed. Thank you, Sandra. That's a great comment. It is free will. You're not selling candy, soda, and popcorn. It hurts no one but you as long as you offer options. That is more than any other theater. That's exactly what we do, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to offer more options. That's a tricky part, too, because carnivores don't really snack. I, well, I wish we could get these. We uh, There's health code things, too. We can't just make up hard-boiled eggs and hand right. them out to people. It's got to be prepackaged stuff. And uh, most prepackaged stuff is junk and not carnivores, so that makes it tricky, too. Anyways, enough talking about the movie theater. Let's go back to some of these other things. Oh, I like this one. Carrie and Jen, throw it back at these zealots by saying when they own a movie theater, they can have a different policy. Yeah, when I get the comments from people like that, too, I always want to be like, well, what are you doing? I'm trying really hard here. I'm doing this documentary. I'm literally, I'm not complaining. Thankful, grateful, blessed. How much time do you think I'm dedicating to this documentary that I will never make a penny from? 100%. Thousands of hours at this point. 100%. Someone left me a comment about that the other day, too. I don't know what the comment was either. He does not take anything. He does not take any money. He does not take any time. I don't want a penny for this ever, mm -hmm. ever, 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 because it's like a principle thing. It's like the reason that I was hopelessly depressed and I was so sick and I was ill was because of greed and greed run amok. That's what I'm really happy about with our documentary. It's completely crowdfunded. Mm -hmm. All of these other documentaries you see, I have been studying them. Almost every documentary you look at on Netflix those cost millions of dollars to get on Netflix. We're going to do it for pennies of the dollar. It's going to be better than those ones. But those ones that cost millions of dollars, mm -hmm. where do they get those millions of dollars from? Companies. Impossible Burger, Beyond Meat, mm -hmm. Pharmaceuticals, someone okay. trying to sell something. And therefore, boom, the whole documentary is slanted right. and biased. In other words, it's not the truth. This, I can promise you, is going to be the truth. It's going to be the truth. It's not going to be some biased thing where someone bought and paid for some product we're selling. All right, I got to get back on track, Jen. Get me back on track. Oh, here we go. You can be proud of offering veterans free admission. Thank you for that. That has been going awesome. That has been – I'm say, so glad we did that. We have – well, the friend of mine, Andy, that came with her husband, Kelly, they were so amazing. They um, – okay, I'm going to say this in a way. They didn't pay for their tickets. We paid for their tickets. But because he's a veteran, he got in for free anyway. But on top of that – he put like a hundred bucks in the thing anyway, and he was a veteran. So very appreciative of all the people that have been donating money to that because 100% all that money goes towards the veterans. And we're trying really hard to fill the seats one day and just do a movie just for veterans. Let Private them, party. Let them pick it out. We'll do concessions, you know, whatever they want. If they want beef sticks, okay, we'll do beef sticks. If they want water, okay, we'll do water. Whatever they want, you know, we want to do 100% um, into that. So, I mean, Just it's definitely for, for anyone that doesn't know, because there's a lot of new people on here, we own the Small Town Montella Movie Theater. Tickets are just $5. It's a passion project. We've been running a year and a half. And we announced a month or two ago that veterans will be free forever. We we didn't just say this and then ask the community to pay for it. We put $500 of our own money, right. which, by the way, wasn't movie theater money either. That was money from our personal checking account we put into that to pay for the first 100 veterans to come through. Well, then a bunch of other individuals saw that on YouTube and they started donating. Individuals now, and companies. And There's companies. And companies that has been uh, sending us checks. We want to expand so we, it. Yes. Should we tell them? We're not, we don't know if we can do it yet. But the goal <laughs> is, um, wouldn't this be a beautiful thing? If we could offer this to senior citizens mm -hmm. free forever. I'm not saying we're doing that, but that is the, the goal. I have to look at the numbers because we get a ton of senior citizens yeah, that do. come in here. We could like mm -hmm. crush the business if we just go out with that. But it looks like it may be possible. We just have to keep seeing how we're I think we're going to see how the veterans go for a little while, see how summertime goes and kind of go from there. But 
Last day of normal. Let's get back to the conversation now. Enough about the movie theater. We do we do movie theater videos usually on Sunday. If anyone wants to join those, we're not doing one. We're not doing one tomorrow. But this is about Jen and family and carnivore. Any questions you guys have? Is this Cammy? Last day of normal. I think this is Cammy. Uh, we did a live stream the other day on Nia's channel about prepping, and Cammy is awesome. I pressure canned cat food today. Ten pounds of hamburger with a, a pound of ground liver. Cammy. I'm, am I saying your name right? I'm so sorry. I'm pretty sure Cammy was in. This is my carnivore brain. Okay. Do you remember that I did a 24 hour live stream from here? That's twice you asked me that. That was back in September. We had a couple individuals that sent us a little testimonial, and I recognized Cammy's face, and Cammy was in that testimonial. And some things just stick in my brain. And the thing that sticks in my brain from Cammy was she said to, in that, in that little video she gave us, carnivore saved me carnivore saved me and she said it with such passion it was amazing so I, I will never forget that but cammy was on this live stream and she's canning meat mm -hmm. and i i know you can can meat we were talking about this my mom has done it we haven't done it yet you canned vegetables before you were carnivore cammy has also uh canned hamburger like patties yeah. full-on patties and then you just pull them out and eat them and they're like they stay on the shelf forever we have to start doing this we're homesteaders we're trying to be prepared Bill Nott has talked about prepping and canning meat. We got to start canning more meat. Last day of normal. Excellent. Amazing. Another amazing uh, YouTube channel. You guys got to check out. Carnivore Cheer, my friend Lori, you might want to focus, Jen, on the types of meat you like best. Also keep in mind that there's a ton of anti-meat messaging out there based on bad data and other misinformation. Thank you, Lori. Andy Schnick, uh, why not fence in the grill smoker area and leave the goats free range? Because it's not just the goat. <laughs> It's not just the grill area. They get into everything. Now, here's an example. Yes, they do. Let's tell them about this. We have an Airbnb above our garage. There's steps going up it. We had a guest call us, and they said, hello, we have a little problem. Oh, what's the problem? Oh, your goats walked up the steps above the garage, around the corner on the porch, and they are banging their head on the glass patio door right now. We can't. We have to. That's when they were in other words, though. Andy, if we blocked off all the areas where the goats would get in trouble, they would be confined to a pen, otherwise known as a goat fence area that we built for them to live in. That is, by the way, huge and much more space than any other goats mm -hmm. have. We are thinking about doing an outdoor kitchen. Mm -hmm. One of our uh, projects that we work on is sometimes companies will send us stuff and we do videos for Amazon products. And there is a company that has like outdoor kitchen stuff. And we're trying to work out something with them because I've already got the outdoor smoker and the outdoor grill. If we have a little sink, then it would be kind of blocked off from the goats at least. But Ivy Dixon said, wow, Jen, you have been looking awesome, girl. Congrats on doing carnivore seven days and hi, Bill, not. Hi, Bill. Hank Hill, did I hear you say you're coming to or near Janesville soon? We're, we're going to be passing through that neck of the woods. Uh, but if you're in Janesville, Hank Hill, go to Thienesville. Next month, we're going to be in Thienesville, the whole family, April 13th. Come to that meetup. Yeah. How about asking Katie and Emma to write to Wisconsin companies like Eusinger's and Johnsonville? Those companies have meat products with sugar in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an idea. Lori just finished reading The Big Fat Surprise by Nina Tycold, she's amazing. She tears through the tons of misinformation about fat. She's been in many an interesting documentary, and I would love to talk to her more. We've got so many good experts lined up for the documentary, but I have yet to talk to her. Jen, your eyes are bigger and brighter, and you are glowing. I love hearing how good it feels and shows. Thank you, Nancy. North Wolf said, the hell with insurance. No way you should pay $1,200 a month. It's a scam. You're right. paying for all the illegal aliens. Yeah, it is definitely a scam, and, and the fact that we're paying so much. Like, shouldn't we be able to just go get some blood work or a checkup or something at 1200 bucks a month? This is the thing that really makes me upset. When we first started paying this 1200 I was almost like, this is ridiculous. I'm so fortunate. We don't have any car payments. You guys have seen my minivan. I paid $1,200 for my minivan, one monthly payment of insurance. I did that seven years ago. It's a rust bucket, but I maintain it and I just keep running it. So we have more disposable income, but then it all goes towards insurance. When we had this insurance like two, three years ago, I was almost sickly fine with it because I was going to the doctor all the time. Was, I was yeah. going all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, last year, I've been on carnivore for over a year now. We paid that $1,200 a month every year. How many times did I go to the doctor in the last year as a carnivore? 
well, once just to get your once to get your doctor your uh, blood tested. No, I didn't even do that. I went to a separate company to get my blood okay, well, tested that, that I paid out of pocket. Oh, you did. I paid out of pocket. I went that. zero times, mm-hmm. which is it's it's so backwards. Like before this, I was going to the doctor every two or three weeks. Mm-hmm. Refill the prescription. Got to go see the cardiologist this week. Got to go to the uh, psychiatrist this week for the. Uh, they got to increase your dosages for the depression medicine, the sleep medicine. Got to go see the sleep doctor. Like, I didn't go. I mean, I didn't zero go, times. My back was killing me. I did not go because I didn't want to pay for the um, deductible. Love that Carrie thought Jen was crazy, but he was living in a tent by the railroad tracks. Love you guys. <laughs> Well, he was what, 15? 14. Then? I was 14. We 15, met at 14 15, in 1994. Right. Maybe I was 15 by the time summer. No, mm-hmm. at the end of summer. Yeah. Oh, you guys, you have no idea. And then the, the the train was bothering me so much. I left and I walked down the road and there was this uh, school and behind the school, there was a, there was an overhang and it was just a cement thing. And I laid down on the cement and I fell asleep there. I woke up and what happened? like an hour later to a uh, police lights and a siren. And the guy came out and he said, we found our guy. I'm like, found our guy. What did I rob a bank or something? My mom had called the police because I ran away. They found me. He took me back to my mom's house. You want to tell the rest of the story? What did I do then? Oh, my mom was so mad. She was screaming at me. And she's like, you're going back to your dad and you're never coming back here again. She was very upset. So I, I wasn't a good kid. I'm a good person now, right, Jen? You weren't a bad kid. I mean, you oh. didn't do... I disconnected her phone when she wasn't I mean... looking. I disconnected her phone while she wasn't looking. The cop car was still parked out in front because he was just messing around on the radio or something. I ran behind the building, and I ran straight back to my tent, and I went back to my tent. I had a little book in there I was reading, and I went back and I read my book. I also... This was pre-carnivore. I found a thing of um, crushed soda on the ground. It had, like, this much... Uh, crush in it that someone threw on the ground. I'm like, well, I'm homeless now. So I drank that and it was like full of sand or something. It was so disgusting. Y'all can think I'm terrible, but I was 14 and my mom was extremely strict. She wouldn't even drive us down the street. She, she didn't want to spend money to drive us down the street. So I couldn't do anything. I would bring him some crackers that I had, but yeah, on day I, four, she brought me a sleeve of crack. I, I remember day four. Do you remember that? No, oh, this is bringing back yes, memories. But that's all that I had. I'm saying my point is, is I didn't, I, I had no money. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't sneak you in my house. So day four, she gave me a thing of crackers and I walked all the way to her house, which was like 10 miles from where I was. And there was a park down the road from her house. And the park had all of these tires, you know, like you could climb on the tires. They were all arranged. And I slept in the tires that night and I ate my sleeve of crackers that you gave me. You owe me. I lived in a tent. It's terrible. Just terrible. If anyone wants to hear more of the tent story, let me know. I can tell you how it ends. (laughs) Carrie, if you keep the chickens in the coop for the morning, most will lay them in the a.m., then let them free range for the rest of the day. We were doing that for a while, weren't we? We were. Now they're just, they just do whatever they want. They're not even really locked up at night. We have two roosters and thank God, knock on wood, in the last two years, we haven't had any missing chickens. Carrie, did you exercise on your weight loss journey? Absolutely not. And I hate that people are told they have to exercise to lose weight. It is complete crap. I, I did. I never exercised until I got down to my goal weight. And then I was no longer sick. When you are overweight and you are inflamed and you are sick like Jen was with all that inflammation, you were sick. Your back was hurting. Could you go exercise? No. I You're, that's like I telling someone with the flu. Pain. Go for a walk. Just go walk it off. You're sick. Mm-hmm. I hate it when people tell sick people they should exercise. Mm-hmm. I started exercising a lot. Once I lost the weight and I was putting the proper fuel in the tank, my energy went through the roof. I, I swear I'd be up till 3 o'clock in the morning if I didn't exercise. But I, I want to exercise. And it's not something unique about me. I hear this from all the carnivores out there. T. Alexander, 200-something from some country. That's amazing. Thank you thank so you. much. Super sticker. 100% of that 200-something goes towards healing humanity. I thank you so much. And then we have a new member from Jessica. Okay, now I got to go back. I got to go back here to these comments and see where we left off. Oh, my goodness. Jen's going to talk for a little bit. Talk about when we had triplets. What was that like? A blur. Yeah, Lily was Lily was about – well, she was two and – under two and a half when they were born. So that was really hard having three plus her. We didn't find out we were having triplets till five and a half months. So that was a big change. Yes, I know I'm a woman. I'm a mom. I should have known, but I, how could you know you have three babies in there? I don't know. I felt a lot of pushing and all that stuff, but I just thought I was having a boy. I don't know. 
So yeah, it was a blur, but I look at them now and I'm just so very, very blessed to have all of them. They're so sweet, loving, caring. I love each one of them. I don't know what I would do without them. And I cry almost every night knowing that, well, Lily's 19 now and the triplets will be 17. So I cry a lot that I'm old. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I cry a lot that I know that they're going to be moving out soon. And that really gets to me. So I'm very blessed that I am close with my kids. I unfortunately have never been close to my mom. I didn't move in with my mom until I was 13. I lived with my dad my whole life. And then she kicked me out at 18. So <clears throat> didn't have very long with her. So I'm, I love my kids and I do anything for them. Anybody else have twins or triplets or anything in their family like that? That'd be kind of interesting. Oh, here's a question. How much money did we inherit? Zero. You know, I get questions like this. Work our butts off. Yeah, I get questions like this that gets me fired up sometimes. Like when people wow. see our property, we're so blessed, are we not? Yes. But people but people see they our see the after part of yeah, the property. They see that, our property and like, ooh, must you know, be nice. Like, the friends that I made now, they're all like, "That's the property you bought." Uh, we went to go look at it, and there was no way. And I'm like, mm -hmm. two hundred people looked at our yeah. property. Yeah. Two hundred. People looked at it properly and said, nope, it was absolutely trash. It was like years. Just We lived in the upstairs in shambles. Mm -hmm. And then I'm inflamed. You're inflamed. We're sick. So we're sitting here trying to do this. Thankfully, my dad came and helped with a bunch of stuff. And just over years, like we've been there for nine years now. We It'll fixed it up. But nobody wanted our property. Should we tell them how much we paid for our property? No. It was like $115,000. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nine years ago, it's 20 acres. Now, people see that now and they, they think we paid like a half a million dollars for it or something. I mean, it does still need a lot of fixing up. But my, we got, we, I wanted we to got say our this. kitchen cabinets and our bathroom cabinets from my dad. We did get that from we your dad. Didn't, he didn't give them to us. No, we still spent about $25,000 on them. But we didn't inherit any money, no. uh, nor did either of us go to college. Uh, we were very frugal. Like, I get fired up about this because a lot of our peers, like when we first met and we're first married, we would look at our peers and they're like, we got to have the granite countertops and we got to have the nicest neighborhood. And we had this little tiny house and we were saving every penny. And, and they were, they were going out on all the vacations and they were, they'd have the new cars. I still I got my junkie. My, my, car, yes. Yeah. I've I never bought, had a new car. Never I, had one. I bought, it's not even a new car. I bought uh, my father-in-law's neighbor's car, truck and I absolutely love it. That was the most expensive car I have bought in my whole life. I'm going to be 44 this year. I didn't think about it. I've never paid so much for a car. You want to know how much I paid for it? $4,000. That was That it. was the most expensive that car you've ever had. My minivan most was most expensive car I've bucks. ever had. So yeah. That's We've been like, very crazy. frugal for many, many years. So like... The other thing is we would see our peers when the new iPhone came out, everyone had it. We had these little track phones. It was a prepaid phone for like $20. So we have been saving and scrimping uh, for, a, we, we were the definition of frugal. Yeah. And a yeah, lot of- Before we had kids too. Even when we had kids, we were very- okay. Anytime we would get any money, we would see how we could invest it so that it would be a return on investment. Yeah. Here's an example. We have a four stall dog kennel on our property. Must be nice. How'd you inherit that? We paid for that out of our we pocket. It. We built it we with built our own our two hands. Stalls. It's a four with stall dad. dog kennel. My dad helped. With Thanks. Dad. <laughs> it's got no electricity. It's off grid. And now it makes, it's paid for itself 50 times over probably. Yeah. So. I was going to say something else and I totally forgot. Oh, so when I was carrying triplets, after we found out I was carrying triplets, I actually made my own website. It was called Triplets Mommy. You might be able to look it up right now, but they, I don't think it's there anymore. they totally screwed it up. But on when I had it, I would go and I would research um, coupons, like coupons and where to get free stuff and, and where to send it. And I mean, we had so many free things just from doing that. It was absolutely amazing. So I made a thing called triplets mommy. It was a really awesome website. Kind of wish I never sold it. Um, but yeah, I sold it. And that was another way that we made money is doing that kind of work too. I mean, so I think we were a pretty good team. We do pretty good together. Thoughts on Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire and favorite film from last year. Ghostbusters. I didn't get to watch it we yet. Didn't see it. We can still watch it tomorrow. Well, we can't. Not Monday, gonna be here. Well, no, Monday we can't. We didn't get to see it. It's been too busy. Yeah, I don't remember. We could be watching it right now. I I think it was good though. 
based on our audience reactions, I don't listen to the reviewers anymore. The audience that was coming out, they really seem to enjoy it. Favorite film from last year? Well, that's a tough one. Oh, I could think of like three and now I can't think of any. I can't. I'm not. The most recent film that I watched that I really liked was that Ordinary Angels one. It was very touching. It was based on a true story. It's not going to win any awards or anything, but I really liked that movie. Last year, last year, last year. Uh, I liked... Um, I'm freezing. It's not even cold down here. Uh, I like the... Um, I'm freezing. Oh, my gosh. What, the Leonardo DiCaprio one. Titanic. Huh? <laughs> Titanic. Yeah, Titanic. Uh, the Martin Scorsese one that came out, that was decent. Oh, uh, moon, moon. The moon. Flower. Flower, killer, killer of the flower, moon. Yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta come back. Like I love movies, and I'm just drawing a complete blank right now. Any ideas when your family is going up to see Bill again? Whenever Bill is ready, with absolutely no pressure whatsoever. I think Bill. Last time I was talking, we're shooting for uh, summertime, sometime, summertime, 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 summertime. But whenever Bill is ready, with no pressure, I can't wait though, because I want to see Bill. <laughs> but also because I love Alaska. I can't wait to go back to Alaska. I'm going to cook Bill some uh, proper slow smoke reverse seared ribeyes. Smoked low and slow. And where he can sit out by the fire. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a blast. Mm. Gone mad. I exercised my jaw muscles chewing steak. There you go. That's the only <laughs> exercise I did prior to coming full carnivore. Sandra says, I don't have a doctor. I don't have health insurance. I do screenings every now and then. It's cheaper that way. That's probably what we should do. We should. I'm just scared that if something would The happen, second we do it, I'm going to get, oh, you got something. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm worried about. But still, for 1200 bucks a month, yeah, just deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, question, have you checked out MediShare? The pastor I listened to out of Florida went with that when his wife retired from nursing. No, maybe we'll have to check that out. Big Man Alaska, another good YouTube channel out of Alaska. I go to the doctor just to hear how amazing I'm doing. That's the only reason I would go, too. I want to go get my ejection fraction tested because I was um, diagnosed with congestive heart failure. I had a mini stroke five years ago. I believe it's gone. It's going to cost thousands of dollars out of pocket. The only reason I'm going is because I want them to tell me that every time I've gone to the doctor, it's because there's something majorly wrong with me. Yep. They never fixed it. This is how backwards things are. Now I want to go to the doctor with nothing wrong with me. It's so backwards that it's going to cost me so much money to go to the doctor with nothing wrong with me. I went so many times with stuff wrong with me and they never fixed it. It's so backwards. Carnivore Cheer Lori says the health coverage situation today is tragic. When my mother was hospitalized more than 50 years ago and had a major brain surgery, her insurance covered 100% of the cost. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. Do you both work at home? Yes. My husband wants to retire to start working with me at home on social media, but we have 11 children. We only pay 600 oh for our entire goodness, family. What plan do you have? How do you do that? I need to fight. Maybe it's Wisconsin. I don't know. But we used to have, they used to have emergency insurance where it was like a couple hundred bucks a month. Mm -hmm. If there's some major catastrophe, then they got your back. They don't offer that since what, like what the, um, uh, Obamacare. yeah, the affordable care act or whatever it is. Ever since that came out, that emergency plan went yep. away. And literally, like you look, what is the lowest yep. plan we can get? And it's like twelve hundred bucks in Wisconsin and for that's us. Just for us, the girls are separate, so mm -hmm. it's absolutely crazy. I mean, how can the families afford that? I don't know. Jen, we are a white-skinned mother and daughter over here, and we learned there's a way to introduce sun starting in the spring, consciously, bit by bit. So summer, there's a natural protective layer. I think there's a good that's there's a good thing to that. Humans. A lot of humans nowadays, they don't go out into the sun. And then all of a sudden, they're like, let's go to the beach. And then boom. Oh, I got burnt. Well, there you go. But I do really believe there is something to the diet. When you're on that standard American diet, I don't know if it's the seed oils or it's the inflammation. Dr. Chafee has talked about when you're eating all that crap, you got inflammation. Your whole body's inflamed. That's why your back hurts. That's why your gums are inflamed. Your skin is also My inflamed. Gums. Yes, you get inflammation in your gums when you're inflamed. So... Maybe you're more susceptible to getting burned when your skin is fully inflamed. There's something to that for sure, I think. Upstairs. Kids are running around upstairs. Hey, Jen and Carrie, oh, love it when you both do this together. Love you both and your principals with the Theater mm -hmm. Carnivore for a year. Love it forever. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks and congratulations. 
Carrie, it was the crap food you were eating that manipulated your bad boy actions. Yeah, when I was a teenager, I was eating junk food then. I, although I was wasn't so bad at that point, but shortly after that, in high school, oh, man, I got fatter and fatter. A lot of it was just junky fast food. But that is why I'm so worried about our children. Generation. Luckily, our children are pretty darn good now. But this next generation, look at them, Jen. You and I ate junk food and processed foods. Yeah. This generation is eating ultra, ultra, ultra processed foods. We don't even know half these ingredients anymore. Mm -hmm. All of these little kids, Emma's age, are going around with these huge Starbucks. It's this much sugar in there. The human body was never designed to consume liquid sugar like that. No. It's like, what the hell is going on? It's what is that? this? that and the fact that even the girls said it where they, I'm not, somebody in my family, that's all I'm saying. If their kids act out, they're like, oh, here, take my tablet. Oh, here, take my phone. Go, just go be somewhere else. I'm like, I understand it because I have four kids, but you got to have a limit. And it's just crazy how nowadays it's like, I'm afraid, like we talk about veterans and stuff. I'm afraid about if something happens with a war comes up, the kids these days, they're not going to, they're just going to crap their pants. They're going to be like, I don't know how to hold a gun. I just know how to hold the remote. I know how to kill people. That's what scares me. It's an escape from natural. I love movies. My favorite quote in this regard is from Jurassic Park. You know what it is? I'm going to I'm going to completely I'm going to completely mess this quote up, but it's something like they were so busy wondering whether or not they could, they never stopped to think if they should. In regards to technology, do we need artificial intelligence doing all of our jobs? Right. Do we need to be staring at phones all the time? Do I need to be down here in a basement with no lights and no windows? Everything that's going wrong in the world is so simple. It's just humanity is getting further and further away from what is natural. What is the opposite of what is natural? Technology. Are we ever going to stop to ask ourselves how much technology do we need or is it even helping us? Because the more technology we're getting, we're getting sicker and sicker. It's crazy. Sorry, I'm hearing a lot of running. That's fine. You want to go check it? No. Did the movie just end? Yeah. Whitney Napier. I have twin boys. When they were first born, I was so overwhelmed. I felt like there had to be more like triplets or quads. <laughs> yeah. It's a blur for us, right? Do you even remember it? Luckily, we got some video and pictures. do it again, but I'm too old. We should show you guys sometime if you're interested. We got that video. I was going to say on YouTube, there's actually a video where I was taping Carrie. I was exhausted, but I was taping Carrie. I did the triplets feeding. And he did it. And legitimately right after he was done it was my shift i went and passed out on the couch <laughs> and then it was my turn we didn't our family our family sucked except for my aunt she was the only one that was really there for us that came and, in and our her. church was awesome and our church was our great. church we had a oh lot of gosh, sweet church ladies come help us came and he worked full time so i had four babies Norwegian monies. It's about $20. Oh, thank you thank so you. much. I really appreciate it. And it's thanks to you. I'm carnivore today. Oh, I really appreciate that. So remember, you, you're you the one that made the hard decision to do it. The hard decision that most of humanity will never make. All right, let's see what else we got here. Twin sons and my daughter has twin sons. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I'm wondering that if our girls are going to have twins or triplets, I was guaranteed. They said, if you get pregnant again, you're going to have a set of triplets because they were natural. We weren't on anything. We didn't try anything. It just kind of, God knew I, we needed four kids. <laughs> well, favorite movie of all time. This is always hard. It's like you're asking your favorite, who's your favorite child? Favorite movie of all time. I have a, a um, there will be blood. Which is is not a horror movie, by the way, starring Daniel Day Lewis. I absolutely love that movie. I also like um, No Country for Old Men. There's a ton of them I love. Goodfellas, Shawshank Redemption. What's your favorite movie, Jen? And then you got to go help Alyssa. It was There Will Be Blood. That's mine. Yeah. Hello. In a minute. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Alyssa needs some help. Well, I can't say we are that frugal need to be as we are retired now, but it is what it is. Yep. Okay, bye. bye. Lynn said, the more I hear about you two, the more I feel blessed to know you both and your girls. Oh, that's awesome. I showed you Lynn Tucker Carnivore's video. Remember, she had the picture of uh, me and Dr. Barry with your favorite oh, is doctor. That her? Yes, that's oh, Lynn Tucker Carnivore. Yes. And her husband is Ribeye I Ranger. It was hilarious because you had a picture of my husband. <laughs> Wasn't it brilliant, too? But she Lynn had a picture is. Of my husband. I'm like, <laughs> 
I said to her afterwards, I'm like, what are you like a reporter or something? Because she's so good on camera. She used to be a host on QVC. My mom would love you. Yeah, I was gonna oh, say. Yeah. Oh, she probably knows who you are, actually, because she always watches. Actually, I think that's where my ring came from. There you go. <laughs> Carla, hey, here we got some more. I have twin boys. I didn't know I was having them until four months. I'm so grateful that my oldest son was nine when they oh, were wow. born. He helped me with everything. See, I don't like you found out at five months. I've told the story. I'll make it really quick. At five and a half months, we were at the ultrasound. That's how we found out. The ultrasound tech said, uh-oh. I see another one. Uh oh, I think there's four. Oh, no, no, no. There's just three. What? Three, what? Three, what? And then we were just like, please, are they healthy? Is everything okay with them? And thankfully they were. But she found out at five and a half months, which is just nuts. I've told this joke many times, but it was the truth. You know, when you're pregnant, everyone asks you, what do you want, a boy or a girl? Mm -hmm. I had a hundred people ask me that people I worked with at the time. What do you want, a boy or a girl? Every single person that asked me, I said, I don't know, but I feel like there's twins in there. I feel like there's two. And they said, why do you feel that way, Carrie? And what did I say, Jen? Because she's twice as crabby. Because she's twice as crabby. But I was actually and three times You were crabby. being well behaved. <laughs> she should have been three times as crabby and she was only twice as crabby. Yeah, I don't know how you carried three babies. That was nuts. That was fun. I would do it again in a heartbeat, believe me. Smart money couple. Well, Yes, we are. We're very cautious of our money. Like he said, he bought his junker for fifteen hundred. I have saved. Had it I did a video a long time ago about how we um, saved up a bunch of money, and like the whole thing with the homestead was being self sufficient. But the biggest advice I have for people is this: invest in yourself. If you get any extra money, invest in yourself. And we've always done that. So, like, we had this crappy. Um, Two family house, like I said, 200 people looked at it probably, they didn't want it. Well, we fixed it up and then the, the two family part of it, we started renting out. So anytime we'd have extra money, we'd invest it in that to make it nicer so that people would want to rent it on Airbnb. When we had a little bit of money for um, other things, we were like, oh, should we do a 401k stock market? No, what can we invest in ourselves? We did the dog kennel. We invested in the dog kennel and then advertising the dog kennel. So we've always done that. And we've always focused on things that are somewhat passive. It's not passive. People get mad when you say passive, but like our Airbnb, for example, it's not a lot of work. It's a lot of upfront work. We pay Emma or a cleaning service. Jen used to do all of that. Mm -hmm. So like the people literally come, there's a lockbox. You don't even have to talk to them. And then you just get a check. So we, we do a lot of things like that. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's the advice, but we were very frugal for a long time. That's why when people are like, oh, must be nice. Look, they got this nice place. And usually often those are the people driving around in a nice car that I would never pay for. They've got the granite countertops and a half a million dollar house in the nicest neighborhood. Yeah. They're maxing out all their credit cards. I've never had a credit card. I, I'm terrified. I would never touch a credit card. If I can't afford something, I don't pay for it. Mm -hmm. So it's always funny when people say that. Do you follow Dave Ramsey's rules? Yes, we do. A little bit. We actually found Dave Ramsey later and we're like, whoa, this guy's talking about a lot of the stuff we're doing. But Dave Ramsey's baby steps are pretty awesome. I'd highly recommend them if anyone's looking into making smarter financial decisions. Ribeye Ranger. This is Lynn Tucker's husband, Jim. With all the new things I learned tonight about your lives together, I have even more respect for you. God bless you, new friends. Oh, thank you so much. Now we got to hear the story of how you and Lynn met. I'm Carrie looking at Jenna my phone, actually. I'm trying to find the video of Carrie. Um, yeah, the good triplets. luck. I have That's it an somewhere old one. on my Facebook. I'm really trying. I'm the, just, the original YouTube video yes, from back in I'm the day. Really, I'm trying to find it really quick as you're talking. So I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm trying to find it really quick. If anybody's interested, that was pretty darn neat. Dave Ramsey is amazing. Yeah, he's got some really good stuff. You know what I love? I haven't listened to Dave Ramsey in a while, but remember we used to do this? He would have a... What was it called? The giving show or the giving episode Yeah, where people were just doing incredibly generous things. Mm -hmm. I think that that is that maybe that inspired us to do the veterans giveaway or something like that. But oh, I love that. I got to we used to listen to him like a uh, podcast in the car and we just maybe tomorrow we got a two hour drive. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, there you go. The Sound of Freedom. Yes, that was one of my favorite movies for sure. Please. Okay. okay, I'm going through pictures. 
can't see it too well, but that's big boy. That was two or three years ago, I think. Nice. Please tell the end of the tent story while Jen looks for the video of me feeding the baby triplets. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> the end of the tent story was, I think like a week into it, I really don't remember the dates. Um, I was so tired and I just wasn't sleeping by the train tracks and I tried to sleep on the cement and sleeping in the tires didn't really work that well. Um, I went home. My mom was living in an apartment and I went in the basement of the apartment and there's all these storage units. And in one of the storage units, there was a mattress and I strategically positioned the mattress. So it was rolled up and I fell asleep in the mattress and I was sleeping so hard because it was, it was warm in there and it was pretty quiet. And as it turns out, my now carnivore sister, two years younger than me, uh, who was living with me and my mom at the time. So she would have been 12 years old. I was 14. My 12 year old sister, who's now a carnivore, by the way, uh, she found me. I don't know if she's doing wash or what. She found me down there. And she was like, just come back. I think mom's changed her mind or something like that. And she convinced me to go back upstairs. And then I talked to my mom and I guess reconciled. My mom had a change of heart and she was like, you can come live with me or whatever. We got to figure out the details. And that's how, that's kind of how the thing ended. I still did have to go back to my dad and then they had to go to court and they had all these arguments about child support. Where's he going to live and all this. But I felt horrible for my dad because I lived with my mom, moved in with my dad, begged because I wanted to live with my dad so bad, moved in with my dad. And then I was like, Oh, I found Jen. See ya. And then I went back to live with my mom again. And yeah, it was a big mess. Well, and then, um, then what happened? It worked out. I ended up living with my mom and then high school, freshman year of high school, we started together and we went into high school and we strategically, I wasn't carnivore then, but I had some brains. We decided that, when you hear the story, they'd be like, you didn't have any brains, you idiot. Uh, we decided to register and strategically pick every single same class together. And we had every freshman year of high school, we had every single class together. Any regrets on that one, Jen? No, no regrets. So, and then I, I think uh, the next year in high school, we didn't do that again, but we had most of the classes, but we had a couple staggered. So like second hour, I'd be in history class and I would write like a big note. I wasn't paying attention to history stuff. I'd write a big note and I would fold it up and I would strategically tape it under the desk. And then she would sit in the same seat. We had this all arranged and she'd get the note and then she'd write a note back. We went to high school. We've been together since age 14. We went to high school every single year together out of high school. Shortly after high school, we moved out. We didn't inherit any money. No, like people were saying. I was kicked out. You were so kicked we out. we had to move into an apartment. I so worked at a warehouse making just above minimum wage. And oh my gosh, I hated that job so much. No air conditioning. No, in the summer, it was scorching hot. I worked in a warehouse for seven years. Oh, that was a soul sucking job. I should be thankful for. And we got an apartment together and uh, we scrimped and saved. But man, we were a mess back then because the only thing we just I don't know what it was as a child. I didn't go out to eat a lot, but we used to go out to eat all the time. We would go to the Chinese buffet. Remember that? There's one right down the road. Oh, my goodness. So bad for you. And we just kept eating and eating and eating and eating. And we saved up our money, though. And then I remember a couple of years after the apartment, we got our house. And because we were first time home buyers, we were able to get it was called a weed loan, where you only had to put three percent down. And our first house was eighty thousand dollars. So we had to come up with twenty four hundred bucks. We had this little tiny Cape Cod house, our first house. And that was where Lily was born. Twenty four hundred bucks down payment, first time home buyers. It was the, the mortgage by the time it was all said and done was almost the same price as renting a stupid apartment. Luckily, we did that early and we got some equity in that house. We were twenty when we first bought our first house. That was a cool little house. Mm -hmm. All right, they say you look great, Jen. Uh, one hope for all. Sandra said, "I love, love, love true story movies." There you go. Ordinary Angels. I think you'll really like. Incredible story about a little girl. Uh, she's talking about insurance and healthcare and stuff like that. Great, great movie. Really good acting in it too. Really well done. Right. Uh, Cabrini was find, another one. Cabrini. I can't find it, but I promise you I will find it because I have it somewhere. That was a really cool thing with the girls. Yeah. Cabrini you loved. Yes. That was. And Katie went to go watch it with us. Yes. Yeah, we're actually going to be playing that here. So yeah. 
That was very good. It's actually kind of nice sitting down here extra long because Alyssa's upstairs cleaning. And I didn't That's what I normally do. I, I bet. I, I clean every night, so I'm good. So We're talking about loose skin here. Autophagy prevents loose skin. And if you fast, you go into autophagy. There's all sorts of benefits to fasting, including loose skin. A lot of people have been asking me lately if I have loose skin. I'm going to do a video. I'm just going to show them. My loose skin is all around my belly. It doesn't look that bad. It's like, not even loose, though. You haven't seen it. You have. I'll show you. I'll. You want to see right now? Seen it. No, no. Here it. Is. Here's what happens. <laughs> when I do push-ups before going to bed, it's my new habit. I try to do push-ups, and that position is not flattering. If anyone out there knows what I'm talking about, that had the beer belly or the gut, it is like, whoa. Okay, I do got some loose skin there, and I got it like in the flanks, like back here. You can see it when you're driving in the car and you got your hand out the window. Okay. You can see it flapping in the wind yes, a little bit. But it's not as bad as it. Yeah, it's. I don't care. I honestly don't. People say that, or I've had people tell me I don't want to do carnivore because I might get loose skin. What? Are you kidding me? You want to be fat and miserable, and be and, and you'd rather be fat than have loose skin. Like, what are you talking about? I don't even care. I, like, I, I would take the fat back. I would take the. It's all of the other benefits. The loose skin. That's like the least least of my worries. Thank you. I'll have to look into autoph autophagy. Is great. Great. Arlene, uh, I'm getting here late. We're having ham and brisket tomorrow. What are you having? Well, go ahead. Was, no, go ahead. She's bringing uh, chicken wings. I'm still having meat aversion, so I'm having a turkey of some sort. My aunt has, I think she said brisket and ham. She's not brisket, something else and ham a tomorrow. Roast. A roast and ham tomorrow. But then we're bringing chicken wings, turkey, uh, a big, huge pot roast that I'm cooking up tonight, but also I slow smoked and reverse seared six New York strip steaks today. And there's two, maybe two and a half of those left. And those were incredible. And those are going with me. That's going to be next to my pocket bacon in my purse tomorrow. What is this pocket bacon? Oh my God. Guys, she, can we just, can we end the marriage counseling today with a conversation about bacon? She says she had bacon 10 years ago. It was artificial bacon, that crap that you put on a salad. It's, there's not even an ounce of bacon in it. It's not even real. She says she doesn't like bacon. I understand baby steps, so I'm going to be chill about it. You have to try bacon. It's the most incredible thing in the world. She doesn't even know what purse bacon is. All carnivores have a purse with bacon in it. So when you're on the road, you can eat. You've never seen my purse? Everyone watching here has purse bacon. Tomorrow I'm gonna to have purse bacon and you I'm know, gonna have all strip I can steak. See in my head right now is JT in that bacon suit. I know I have nightmares about that too. <laughs> Being That's birthed. all I see when you keep saying purse bacon. Shout out JT Poco Moonshine family. Oh my gosh. When we did the twenty, was that the twenty-four hour live stream where we had the bacon suit? Yes. On? Adam texted and me Adam, and he was like, "Where he looked like Garth from." <laughs> Adam <laughs> texted me and he said, "Kerry, doesn't JT look like he's?" being birthed because oh he was coming out of the and we told jt we're not talking oh. behind his back we told jt but adam said that to me while dr chafe who's on the 24-hour live show i started cracking up i couldn't and then every time i looked at jt i was thinking it looks like he's being birthed out of a big piece of bacon his head was sticking out of the bacon and he had this little the bacon flap like this looked like a little baby bonnet so jt looked like a little baby with a bonnet on it coming out of some bacon are you going to try bacon mm -hmm. by before the next live stream mm -hmm. Just a little piece. It will get you through so much. It's incredible. It's nothing like beef. Next it's not fatty. It's crunchy. Say. It's like a Hello, potato chip. Do I need six, eight intermittent fasting on carnivore? Let's go to the next one. At the end of April, I get to have Dr. Tony Hampton as my doctor. Congratulations. That We need more Dr. Tony Hamptons. That man is absolutely a life changer and incredible. Hello, do I need to 16, eight intermittent fast on carnivore? No, you don't need to. Uh, it wouldn't hurt. Intermittent fasting is great, but, uh, eat until you're comfortably full is the wonderful advice from Dr. Barry. And I love it. Listen to your body on carnivore. It'll talk to you more. You know, I have to say there's 454 people on here and you've been here for an hour and 47 minutes. <laughs> so thank you so much. Jen's so thankful. She's going to go home and I'm going to make her some bacon tonight. Oh, you would love bacon. It's like potato chips. It's crunchy. It's delicious. Hey, we got Bill Nutt. I think you and Emma were here on August 9th. I was thinking you guys could be back this August for the... That's what I was thinking too. July, August. So the end of summer. 
But Bill, like I've always said, there's absolutely no pressure. You tell me when you're ready, but I want to come back so bad. That's what that's kind of what I had in my head too around August to go back. Now we have to figure out how cuz you're going. Close the theater. All the girls want to go too. Close the theater. The world famous Montello Theater will be shut down. Mm -hmm. I will never shut down the theater for anything. But Bill. But Bill. Yeah. Going to Alaska. Oh my goodness. Screw Alaska. I just want to meet Bill and Daisy. <laughs> Jojo asks, do you coach? I'm trying to get started. I'm an obese, inflamed mess. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I don't do coaching. I highly recommend Bella's Steak and Butter Gang. I was just going to say that I just started a couple days ago. And They're I wonderful. Absolutely, you don't have to get a coach there. I, I, my understanding is the coach is $75 a session, but you get your coaching from the people that you talk to because they've been through that. Or all these people on here, they will help you. Yeah, there's like a coaching part of it, and then it depends mm -hmm. on what you say by coaching. But on Bella's Steak and Butter Gang, they have all of these Zoom calls and meetings and all these things you can join and a, a huge community. There is something very important about that, JoJo. I used to just cynically think, oh, you just eat meat. What's so hard about it? No, you're eating meat in a world where everyone is doing the opposite and they think you're crazy. You got to be around like-minded individuals, and that's why these communities and groups are great. I have had several people tell me they've tried several groups. There's a lot of great groups out there, too. I'm a member of Dr. Barry's group. I really like his group. Um, Bella's Steak and Butter Gang, Jen is a member of. So we're, we're divvying it up here. I've heard a ton of people uh, say nothing but good things about Bella's Steak and Butter Gang. So shout out to them. I, I would recommend it. They have these 30-day plans, too, where you can try it for 30 days, which is great. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, try Carnivore. Just give it 30 days. I, I like 60 days better. But you can do anything for 30 days. So what is it, like 30 bucks for 30 days? Mm -hmm. My goodness. Can you pay a dollar a day? Can you pay a dollar a day? Like, what would you spend a dollar a day on before? You can't even get a cup of coffee. Mm -mm. All the junk food we were eating before, a buck a day. And especially, like, maybe you just need it for a month or two months or a couple months. Who knows? Mm -hmm. All right. We got to get these things here, here, here. Lynn Tucker, carnivore. Agree with the kids today about being fragile. Yeah. Or so far. Is Alyssa cleaning upstairs? We're going to go up there. Probably she's just not. She there. just said uh, she's not happy with me. Tell her she's got to clean. Tell she her. Said, we'll, tell I her. I'm not happy. Bribe her. Question Do twins or tri triplets run in your family on either side? Sandra, no. No, they don't. It was a complete shock. Wait, what? And twins and triplets do not run no, in our family. But the funny thing is, is when his grandpa was alive, we asked him and he said, I think I had great, great, great aunts. That were triplets, but I mean that was three hundred years ago. Like, Usually, you know, great, great, great. There's and they, he said, you know, they didn't make it. So I mean, no, we have no. His cousin Jeremy is married to somebody, so she's out of the family, so to speak. And she actually had twins, but that ran in her family, not, not ours. His. Yeah, yeah. The crazy thing is, there's lots of triplets and quads in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll, some of that is because of fertility medicine mm -hmm. and I'm not saying anything okay. bad about that. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that, but we didn't have any fertility medicine. I'm not, the only reason I say that is because the odds of having natural triplets is crazy. One in a million, I think. I don't even remember. I remember the doctor the telling us something. One in a million. I don't know if it's that high. Yeah, maybe that was, maybe that was identical triplets. No, I, think it was. I don't know. Natural Either triplets way. are crazy. Yeah. Obviously. You don't see it a lot. And our girls are not uh, identical either. Thank you, Martha. When they were born, I thought Katie and um, Emma were identical. We couldn't tell them apart. So I make fun of them. I'm like, maybe you're Katie. Maybe you're Emma. <laughs> Sweet Nia's life. My twins are 21 and I have a 24, 23, and 12-year-old. Oh, Amazing. 12-year-olds. You have lots of, to have lots kid, of blessings. Too old. My body's too old. Um. Do you remember the the only bad part about having triplets? It was mostly amazing, especially with all the church ladies in our group. But you'd go out in public. Papers. Well, that too. But people would always say, oh, thank God it's you and not me. Remember that? Well, it was that. And then I had a lot of people saying, well, I how, I guess you needed help with that. I'm like, help with what? And she's, they're like, getting pregnant. I'm like, no, I didn't. I just needed one try. <laughs> people would say, oh, better you than better me. And I would always say, yeah, probably. Carrie, no country for old men is on my worst movie list. What? But we can still be friends. That's the I funny thing with movies, right? I don't like it either, though. Oh, I love it. It's that book is written by is that 
Cormac McCarthy. I read the book, and the book is so true to the movie. I get it, though. A lot of people don't like it. They don't like the end, but I absolutely love that movie. I love the Coen brothers, too. Anything the Coen brothers do. But what, we could still be friends. I get it. Movies are divisive that way. I, I have some close friends where I'm like, I can't believe you you like that movie, and I hate it, and it's always vice versa. Jen, you're a champ. I struggle carrying one at a time. God bless you, little mama. Well, it's over and done. I would, I would do it again in a heartbeat. If I wasn't this old. <laughs> I was in the military when I had my two oldest, who was 23 and 24 now. Wow. Oh, here's a good question. Jen, how many weeks were the girls when you delivered? Did they have to stay in the hospital NICU? That was the hardest part. So, yeah, they were in the NICU for, well, I was, I went to 34 weeks, 32, 32 weeks, five days. So I was pretty good for holding triplets. Um, they were supposed to be born on July 4th, which I tried to hold out more. And they were supposed to be born on July 7th, which would have been cool because it would have been 777. But I was trying so hard to hold them in even longer. I had preeclampsia. So they were born on uh, 797. Um, so they were born premature. And yes, they were in the NICU for a month. And then poor Katie was left all alone for another week after because her lungs were not fully developed. She was um, just shy of three pounds. They were each, well, they were three pounds, but Katie was just shy of three pounds. So she had a little bit harder time. Turn um, the heat off. My goodness. It's like 300 degrees I'm in here. freezing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I freeze all the time. So 32 weeks. Oh. Uh, well, here's a, here's a, here's a quick story for you. The craziest thing after Jen delivered the triplets, she didn't get to well, see them. Vacuuming. She didn't get to see them. See, if we keep talking, she's going to clean the whole Three thing up. Three days. Three days. Three days. I got to see her kids before she got to see them. Our kids. Video. I mean, you saw them. They brought them out and they're like, here. And then yeah, they, here, they, and then they rushed they... them away. Okay. So here's a quick story. This is my favorite story to tell people. The most insane, memorable, unforgettable day, second minute of my life. They said, Carrie, come down the stairs, right? I go down the stairs and I go into a room. This room is almost as large as the movie theater upstairs, maybe half the size of the movie theater. It's a huge room. There's three pods. Each pod has six healthcare workers, a nurse. Uh, one of them is a breathing specialist, a doctor. There were 18 individuals in this room. I walk into this room and I have to decide which daughter of mine to go meet first. All by myself because you were doing whatever you were doing upstairs. That's a joke. That's a joke. She <laughs> I, was I could not get out of bed. They wouldn't let I her had see my the girls. Second C section, so that was even harder. <laughs> the women uh, that were the nurses there and men. I think maybe there were men there. I don't know. They were incredible though. Imagine dealing with Katie was. I mean, like this, right? It's smaller. Like this, like yeah. I can't even do it. She was like a pound and a half or something. A little under. What, like so. the, she weighed. She weighed less than this. Is that a pound? She, she was about this heavy. They're doing great now, but don't make me sick. So I always tell the girls, uh, I'm never going to tell you which one of you I met first. Which one did you meet first? I don't know. I met Alyssa. Alyssa was... The, my nurse made me get out of bed, and I'm so grateful for it. I was in so much pain. I couldn't stand, but she made me get out of bed and I went down there and I was just in tears. And I didn't know who to go to first. I just went right for the middle and that was Alyssa. Alyssa Lynn. Yeah, those are the memories. After that, though, it all became a blur, mm -hmm. a big blur. Again, I would do it because it was just heartbeat, but... feeding, feeding, feeding. Diaper, diaper, I diaper. I find that movie. I have to find that movie because that was amazing. I have tons of pictures. We got some good footage. I showed a little bit of it here or there. Are you crying now? Yeah. <laughs> we had, we got some good footage. I have footage of you calling your mother. Oh, my gosh. I remember that. That's on there. Yeah. And little Lily, she was. To tell her mom that she's Lily, having triplets. Lily was reading a book because she goes, peek a -boo. It was, oh, I can't. She's 19 now. Your mom said, oh gosh. well, how could that be? She's like, we're having she's not triplets. The lady from Christmas Vacation. She, she, she is. She's like, <laughs> you're like, we're having triplets. She tells her over the phone, and her mom's like, what? How? How could that happen? No, that's not right. That was pretty I fun. Have to find that. That's the original YouTube. That, so that was heck? 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. We got it on we got it on footage. 
What did even what did we even record it on back then? Did they have phones it back was an then, Jen? IPhone, I think, it? iPhone out there back then? Jen, is it okay to send you a friend request on Facebook? That's Sandra. I thought we were. Yes, of course. Okay, let's see. Let's see if there's any other ones here. Man, we went down the rabbit hole tonight. I appreciate all you 460 people on here. Thank you so much. Honestly, you make me feel loved and happy and want to keep going. I don't I don't look in the mirror and be like, oh, I'm pretty. Or I feel good today. So I love reading these. She's, I don't know if you guys can hear that. But Alyssa's going to town she's upstairs. She's really going nuts. I think. I she's, think she, part of it's anger. What? I think we might have to take some money out of the, the theater fund and actually pay her tonight. Yeah. No, she got tips. She got mad tips tonight. It was well, a lot her and of David tips. got the tips, and they both. Yeah, how many tips they pulled? Fifteen dollars each. Fifteen so bucks for. Well, she's been up there for several hours. Yeah, now. she's been here since five with me. So. I did make her a steak earlier, though. I keep reminding her of that. Four, Most kids don't get to eat a steak as often here. as she does. It's a lot she's of patties at home for the girls. A lot of eggs and patties, but every now and then they'll get a little steak. Mm. I should hold it over and be like, "Work at the movie theater tonight, and I'll get you a steak." Oh, she messaged me, I guess. She hears us talking. <laughs> Probably. Hi, Eliza. <laughs> oh. Who's she talking to? I think she's saying, I think she said you're annoying. <laughs> Here we go. Yes, Jess, Jen. Oh, David's there. Okay. Just, I was like, who is she talking to? Just try a little bit of bacon, Jen. I don't, I don't eat that much of it, but a little bit with meat and eggs is so nice. It adds a nice crunch. It's like a potato chip. It's just so good. See, she has this in her head. She's never eaten bacon, so how can you be so worried about eating it? I didn't eat bacon for about 40 years when I first went keto. I tried it. It was delicious. Now I eat it almost every day. Said Carly A. And literally uh, 8 billion people on this planet would agree with that statement. Big except shout out for to, Jen. Big shout out to my cousin, David. I actually call him my son. I've, I've never had a son, so he's a son to me. All right, Aaron. I love him. He's a good kid. I want a Montello Theater t-shirt. I think we have those on our website at montellotheater.com. You can purchase mine. shirts on the website if you're interested. I love making t-shirts. If you go to montellotheater.com. Did I make yours? No, I didn't make yours. If you go to montellotheater.com, we also have a playlist that has just movie theater videos, including when we purchased the theater, when we took over the theater, when we had the DeLorean, when we had the Ghostbusters. I got a little bit of video today, but not... That not... Yeah, was a lot of fun. We had Ghostbusters tonight, yeah. Oh, here we go. One in 80, 100. That sounds about right. I think it's like one in a million if they're if they're identical. Mm. Still one in 80, 100. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a blessing. Complete blessing. Question. If you don't have a credit card, how do you pay the groups or giving to channels? I have a de I have a debit card. So yeah. The difference being I don't take I don't loan money from the credit card company, mm -hmm. but I do have a debit card that we could use similar to a credit card. But the difference being anytime I do that, like I do a lot of um, super chats to other channels and stuff like that. It comes right out of the bank account versus, you know, taking a loan and then paying it back later kind of thing. That always scared the heck out of me. We have a lot of family. My cousin's on here. Yes, the diaper calculator. Remember that? Hi, Lori. Diaper calculator. You remember that? Vaguely. You had like, you you made all these apps. Hi, cuz. I miss you. I don't know if you're still on. To calculate how many diapers you'd run through in a... Yes. Why, who would need that other than some <laughs> triplets? Because you were crazy. I was crazy. Apparently, That's I had a right. diaper yes, calculator back did, in the day. He did, and he also had a website, 50,000 Baby Names. Remember that? Yes, I talked okay. about that before. It was an app. Oh, hi, Lori. How you guys doing? I think I, I talked about that with Dr. Hampton. I want, I want to see her. Can I come up there? She lives in Minnesota. I want to go up there. You, you can do any videos in Minnesota. I'll stay by her. Weezer's going to be in Minnesota on September 4th. Oh, there you go. Right after your Shouldn't birthday. Shouldn't you know that? I thought you had to be that for my birthday. I bought my own tickets. I'm going to Mudvayne. Oh, that's good. I hope you have fun my on my birthday, birthday going to Mudvayne. No, it's March, May 15th. I bought my own damn tickets. Excuse me. My hey, who is running the theater? Hey, it's my buddy, Jose. Jose was here for the big meetup. Um, Alyssa's running it right now. Yeah, is it doesn't he comes a lot? He comes with his family. He was here last weekend. Yeah, he, he watched him. Ghostbusters last yeah, weekend, right? He came last weekend. I'm sorry I missed you, buddy. I'm usually here, but often on Fridays, not on I'm not. Fridays. Saturdays and Sundays. 
You guys should show Cabrini. We are. We are showing Cabrini. Not next week, the week after. Yeah, it's a little bit later. It's hard with a single screen to work all these things in. You, you missed JT. He said hello. Where? Looking good, Jen. Thank you. I don't know if it was JT or Anna. Thank you. JT, Appreciate shout that. out. Poco Moonshine family. JT is excited about we were it. We're talking about you. So I told you about the far, the, 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 the homestead rescue. Yeah. JT's a huge fan of that. Mm -hmm. And he was like, dude, like, do you need any help with it? And on the application, I filled out a huge, did you know I filled out this application today? No. Well, it took me like here? two hours. It took me like two hours to fill out this application. And part of it was, do you have any friends that will come help you like resurrect your homestead? Mm -hmm. I was, so I asked JT and of course he was like, yeah. So I'm like, here's JT, the farmhand. There so you go. we'll see it. We'll see if it happens or not. If we end up on a reality show for homestead rescue, your daughters are beautiful. And so is the whole family. Oh, thank you. I didn't like bacon for 40 years. I love it now, Jen. Do you ever visit San Diego, California? Not, I I've been there once a long time ago with my previous job and it was beautiful. Uh, I do intend to go back there with Adam. There's a couple of individuals who are interested in filming there. Uh, we have a lot of people we're going to be filming. Like, it is getting crazy. She knows. What, what about this date? Okay, can we move it to this date, to this date? We're going to be making some announcements really soon, but it is going to be crazy. And the girls will be there, too, which they're super excited about. I unfortunately can't because of this place, but. You're going to some. Dr. Ken Berry, PhD community, has five, 12, and $20 levels with a live Zoom with their doctors each week. PhD coaches are extremely helpful, as are members who share their own experience. A hundred percent. I was a member of the $20 level for a long time with Dr. Berry. I think I switched down to the $5 one. I've just been too busy going in there. Um, Dr. Berry was on the other day. He, he, was, wearing, he was wearing a, a Healing Humanity shirt yep. that Adam uh, put together for him. That was pretty awesome. Yep, Some people were asking questions, too. Susan got the comments too. People would say double trouble and I would say double blessings. Absolutely. Triple blessings. Triple blessings yeah. 100%. Would you want would you want to raise the triplets again? Yes, I definitely would. 100%. Oh, could you imagine? 100%. Let's go. You ready? Me. I'm not even joking. I'm too old, but yes. Yes, I definitely You're not would. too old, Jen. I would definitely. Oh my god. By I'm all gorgeous. accounts and measures, you should live to be 120 years old if you stick with a proper human diet. You're in your 40s. You have 80 more years. You haven't even lived a third of your life yet. Imagine how you could raise children now knowing what you know now with a proper human diet, without brain fog, with full of energy, with the carnivore goal. Someone said they can't hear me. You need to shut up. <laughs> Sorry about that, Wendy. I don't know if you can see it. The microphone's right right here well, the problem is she keeps so, rolling that way I'm, so then you can't hear I can't her i can't get any closer i can't go that way anymore because i'm right up against here. the wall so unless i go right here hi how you doing can, can you text Alyssa to ask her if she's done cleaning it can you guys hear me now <laughs> how scary to have all your babies in the hospital for that long you're a trooper yes oh. but we were this was the thing we were at the we, well we basically stayed there in shifts but we were at the Ronald McDonald house. Yes, thank God for thank that. Thank God for that. Every time we and go to McDonald's. And we had Lily. So Lily was there um, with us all the time. I mean, my aunt would come. My aunt, my aunt Mary, my aunt Elaine, his aunt Mary, who I absolutely love. She's she's like a sister to me. Um, she took the girls, uh, Lily, a couple times. And my dad took her once. And But I mean, the girls but were the there. But the Ronald McDonald house came through for us. Oh, Say what you will about McDonald's. I don't know. They got a lot of stuff, but that was a great thing. And there were a lot of families in there that had sick children or otherwise. Mm -hmm. We were so far away. We would have, I don't know what we would have done. No, we lived, we, didn't about, have the... we lived an hour and a half away from the hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We stayed at my aunt's house prior to me. We've paid it back too, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, all of the years of going to McDonald's since then, they always we ask you, do you want to round up for Ronald mm -hmm. McDonald's? I always say yes. Your triplets are a blessing. Oh, thank you, Brett. All four. Brett got to meet all four of the daughters, including Lily, who never shows up on camera. <laughs> Lily uh, has a new job now, and she's just doing awesome. All the girls are doing so good. I know I attribute everything to Carnivore, but, man, their mood, getting together, doing stuff. Like, look at this. Shout out. Lily's got a really good job. Her mood's been great. Awesome. Coincidence that she's Carnivore now? I don't know. Emma and Alyssa, they've got this cleaning business. They've been cleaning our Airbnb. They branched out. The other day, they went to three houses in mm -hmm. one day. I'm like, are you guys going to start hiring employees? They're in high school still. 
they're in high school and they're running their own business. Yep. So I'm really happy Very for them. Home. And then Katie has her own big, huge thing. Our Amazon business that she basically runs. She's got to do all of the photos and video work. So I work with her, but she edits everything. She sends it to somebody that we work with. She submits it to Amazon. She's absolutely amazing. Alyssa runs the dog kennel with me. Summer of 2007 is when the See, iPhone first came out. Okay, so quick story. I said before we've always had these track phones. True. When the triplets were born, I guess this was in 2007, I bought an iPhone, but I justified it by saying, I'm going to pay for this thing. I want to make an app. I did this app called, I had no idea how to make apps either. I found someone to help me program it. Again, invest in yourself. I invested in myself. I made an app called Pregnancy Countdown Timer. And you'd put your due date in and it would tell you like, how big is the fetus? What can you expect this week? What? How far along is the development? Stuff like that. It kind of did okay, but then I did another app after that. It was called 50,000 Baby Names. And I told Dr. Tony Hampton about this. He was asking me about this. It was one of, it was the most popular baby name app in the world for several years. In fact, at one point, I went to get my hair cut. And when I went to get my hair cut, the lady, small talk, asked me what I did. And I told her, and she said, oh my goodness, I named my baby from a name I found in your app. I'm like, wow, that is crazy. Um, it was kind of cool because we were looking for baby names for triplets. It's kind of hard. You got to come up with all these names. And we were finding all these books. And then I found all these databases online. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool if they were all together, like find all the baby names and the meanings, but then also have them categorized. That's what kind of set ours apart. So you could have like... Um, what were some of the categories? Like flower names, mm -hmm. like rose, lily, lily. Yeah. So they had all these categories. It was just a fun thing. Like if you're putzing around on your phone to look through these different name categories and then you could, you could brainstorm and favorite them. That's what I did back in 2007. And it actually worked enough to pay for my iPhone. Uh, but even after that, that iPhone broke or whatever, we went back to track phone, pay, prepaid, whatever the prepaid phones were that we'd pay 20, 40 bucks for. Right. And then literally that entire time I've had prepaid phones until about a year ago, I upgraded to an iPhone because mm -hmm. I do so much video stuff. And it was such a pain for my cheap Android prepaid phone, getting the video off the phone into the editing software. Mm -hmm. I bit the bullet. Carnivore will fix Jen's thermostat. I hope so, guys. It is it is like a sweat I'm lodge down here. Freezing. I am dripping in sweat right I'm, now. I'm She's freezing. got the heat just crank. I'm freezing. How's Alyssa doing upstairs? Okay, we got to get to the bottom of these comments. Lily's here. actually... Lily! She's actually down here. <laughs> she won't come in here, though. Lily, come in here. There's 500 people that want to say hi to you. Yep, she won't come in here. Carrie won't be able to get the bacon away from Jen once she tries it. Favorite movie, <laughs> The Count of Monte Cristo. I love that movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio's in there, right? Great. Amazing story, obviously. Who, who's who's the author of the Mon Count of Monte Cristo? This is Carnivore Brain right here. Mm. Well, if you have to squeeze it that hard, I don't oh. want to. Edmond, um, Dante, Edmond. Oh, it's going to come to me. I'm going to Google it real quick. Oh, no. oh, we got to wrap this up, right? This is fun. There's like 450 people watching. I know. You want to end? I don't want to end it. I don't want to stop. They have cars. They can Alexandra <laughs> Dumas. Dumas. They Dumas. can go home. They have cars. Oh, we have cars. a car. Can they? Wait, do we have a car? All right, here, here's a question. I have my minivan here. Been watching for almost a year, starting Carnivore Monday. Monday. Any quick advice for beginners? 100%. Here we go. This isn't self-promotion. In fact, don't watch my videos. Do your research. Don't just jump in and say, I'm going to eat chicken and turkey. Dr. Barry has amazing videos. Dr. Chafee, how to get started on Carnivore. Carnivore 101. Carnivore mistakes. I just launched a video this morning called The Five Stages of Carnivore. Do your research. You're going to jump in and you're just going to fail when you have this freely available information. Commit yourself to 30 days. Don't tell yourself you're just eating meat. You're eliminating all of this crazy processed garbage humans were never intended to eat. You could do anything for 30 days. Go on your phone. Get a little app. They have apps like Countdown Timer so that you can just you can count things down. Write things down. What is your goal? What is your why? The first week is going to be tough. You budget for an entire month, right? You're going to be eating some really good food. Put some of your good budget near the front so you can really enjoy that first week. Get your fatty ribeyes, your expensive steaks. Spoil yourself a little bit in the beginning. If you get any sugar cravings, which you will, know they will not last forever. They are just temporary. And when you get those cravings, you eat bacon. Bacon or fatty meat if you're not, not a bacon kind of person. 
do those things. Watch a lot of Dr. Barry videos, Dr. Chafee videos, Dr. Hampton videos. Bacon is meat candy, meat potato chips, 100%. Make bacon chips like Dr. Barry does. $10 super chat. Thank you so much. Want to be a part of the movie to help others like you help me. Is there a t-shirt like Jen's? Yes. So um, I, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. We have Healing Humanity shirts and we have Montello Theater shirts. Those are This at, particular one I made because it's the different color on it. But yes, we do have these. MontelloTheater.com. On the site. Yeah, you click on the thing. You can order any size you want. It'll ship yeah, right to your you. house. That and, all goes towards the movie theater. We don't 100%. take any money for that either. Jen Bacon will heal you from the terrible bacon experience you had. All right, we got to get to here. Are the girls waiting for us? They know they they know they can go after they clean, or they're. I haven't heard anything from them. Oh, David snapped me. Let's see. Doctor Baker is in San Diego. Is he right now? I thought he lived in Washington. Did you see Kent Carnivore's latest video? I commented he should paint the Healing Humanity, the Power of Proper Human Diet movie poster. I didn't see his latest videos. I do watch most of. Lee Cope is Kent Carnivore's videos. He's got a great YouTube channel. I will check that one out tonight. He's awesome. He's been doing some great videos. Really fun YouTube channel. I'm near San Diego. I have spinal muscular atrophy three and would love to be a part of the documentary. I just started my channel. Hey, shoot, shoot us an email. If you go to healinghumanity.movie, there's a contact form on there and let us know. Tell us your story, especially if you're going to document it. That's one of the big things we're looking for is people that are willing to document. And the triplets are old enough to help. Yeah, the triplets. Oh, we have another baby. Oh my Ooh, God, I didn't think of that. Wants one so bad. She absolutely loves kids. Nancy Chandler, her twins were in the NICU for six weeks. Seven kids. Oh my I had gosh. seven kids and one at a time, four in diapers, one set of twin girls. When people said better you than me, I would. We got to find the other part of that. <laughs> McDonald's has 100% beef patties. So does Burger King. Yeah, I, from time to time, we head over to McDonald's to get those patties. I know people complain it's not the greatest meat in the world, but it's 100% beef, and they don't use seed oils. They put it straight on the thing. Next one. I'm just yes. getting here where your triplets conceived naturally. Yes, they were. Yes. Lisa has nine girls. Wow, what a blessing. Our Amish neighbors, and they're not even our neighbors, they live pretty far away, but our really good Amish friends have how many children now? Eleven. Eleven. Mm -hmm. And they already have two grandbabies. Yep. Keep trying for that boy, and <laughs> and you got nine girls. God bless you. Three sons. Wow, Lisa's down 127 Holy pounds. Cow. 12 10 pound bowling balls, almost 13. Oh my God, I couldn't even imagine. Jen, you're glow. getting that carnivore glow. Thank you. Thank you for moving closer. Okay, thank you. I'm kind of cranked over to carry right now. Bill, not you could have a great business doing sightseeing tours in your area for carnivore fans. Hey, that is the truth. Bill, not man. Hatcher's Pass. I talk about it too much, but I can't. You're going to see Hatcher's Pass. I can't wait. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's our friend Sherry. She was here for the meetup. She's got a great channel. The Carnivore Mommy. Happy Easter to you as well. <laughs> hey, Lily, love your salmon fillets. <laughs> he was over after the meetup and Lily was making that. Yeah, that, Lily will not be on camera. I can't even take a picture of her. She won't. <laughs> she likes making the salmon, though. She won't let me. David's upstairs. He wanted to come down and say hi to you to hide everybody so we gotta wait a second did they get it all cleaned up up there i think so david's a really really great he actually well he's the one that has twin brothers he actually has three brothers but he's got twin brothers here's another tip i missed earlier that uh individual make sure you take electrolytes when you start carnivore that's a good good advice too um we did keto chow and element i like keto chow because you can just drip it into drip your it water down. especially when you're first starting and make sure you drink plenty of water eat plenty of fat I absolutely loved your five stages of carnivore. When I got a carb craving, I put a tablespoon or two of butter. It goes away. Very satisfying. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad people love that video. It's so interesting. Sometimes I work so hard on videos and people are like, eh. And then other videos, they just come out of nowhere and people love them. And that happened to be that five stages of carnivore one. 
why is it my hair is thinning? I'm like, what? Let's see. We got to get to the bottom of this. CB Cormac, I worry that Burger King cooks their burgers on the same grill they cook their impossible burger, so I don't eat Burger King. Yeah. Kitty is 50 nice. pounds down. Thank you for the motivation, Carrie. That is amazing. Be proud of yourself. Look, she's got the bacon. <laughs> Be proud of yourself. That's incredible. Hey, look who's here now. Hi, Mom. Thank Grandma you. Grandma Liz, how's it going? Happy Easter if we don't talk to you tomorrow. Yes. We're going to see Grandma and Grandpa carnivores. Fourth of July, right? Yeah. Fourth of July. That's going to be fun. It's been a while. Jilly's primal life got to meet Lily. She's sweet. Oh, thank you. <laughs> She's a, oh, somebody's coming. Hello? It's probably David. Is it my son? What's up? That's my son. See? This is cousin David. Say hello. There's 421 people here. How's it going, peoples? This is my son that I never had. <laughs> oh, thank you. Bye. Thanks, Andy. Oh, that was sweet. <laughs> How'd it go up there? Uh, I don't know. I was at a friend's house while oh. that was happening, but I came back up clean though. Oh, see, I told you he's a good kid. Got dog hair all over me. Dogs attacked me since I walked There's in. 418 carnivores on here. Yeah. They want to know: Are you gonna go carnivore again? Um. You tried carnivore for a while, right? Uh, I was like four days, and then I was gonna well, pass out at work. So then I ate a Snickers bar, and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, did you? You, you got to do it properly. Do it again properly. Uh, you got to get plenty of fat, electrolytes. Water. Uh, I was also working 14 hours a day at that point. I'm like four hours of sleep. So yeah, that might have not helped. I was about to pass out at work. That would bad. How did your How did your golf game go today? Uh, pretty bad. I suck at golf, but it was fun though. <laughs> Katie and David went golfing today. Okay, you're. Uh, also wants to go home for a little bit. There. All right, see Thank ya. You. Bye. <laughs> All right, we're going to get to the bottom of these now. My young son. Oh, there we go. We got to him. Nephew. It's a nephew. He's my nephew, yeah. Well, he's his nephew, but it's a good kid. <laughs> yeah, not a son, nephew. No. He, he he's, a, he's in college now, and he comes over every now and then. He's coming to Easter with us tomorrow, yeah. but he comes and helps with the movie theater. He did amazing today. Oh, my God. Normally, the girls or Carrie or I would be flustered because people were like, I want a soda. What kind of soda? What size soda do you want? Well, I don't know. I want a medium. And then it would back up. So we had, he had like six sodas, and he remembered every single one of them. He did absolutely wonderful. Normally, you have to look at him and yell, I need a large Pepsi. He's like, I know. I know. So, yeah, it was. it's always nice having him here. All right. Should we wrap her up? Wow, this was long. Two hours and 20 minutes. Got two more people in the last second. Thank you guys so much. This is crazy. What? Well, what do you got to? Uh, you got to end it. This video is you about you. Keep You're talking. On... Let's keep going. I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't want to go home. <laughs> what time is it by you guys? It's uh. We gotta get up early tomorrow. It's nine forty-two here. Oh crap! We do. We gotta leave early. It's nine forty-two p.m. here. So what do you got? What do you want to end it with? You're on day seven, carnivore. Yeah. Should we do it? Should we do one of these every Saturday now? No, more shorts though, right? I did a sh like I said, I did a short. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I, I, what I ate today, I didn't really eat much. I had that four eggs. What did we eat this morning? I had four eggs, right? Oh, we, we had, had scrambled eggs, eggs and ground beef. We had scrambled eggs and ground beef, and then I had. The one egg here, but I'm probably going to finish these on the way home. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Thank you, everybody, for coming and talking. And I'm sorry that we didn't get to everybody's comments. Um, but when I am upstairs, I try to answer people's comments. And oh, there's my cousin again. Lori, happy Easter. I love you all. I'm planning a trip by you. Hopefully, I haven't yet, but. Um, yeah, I missed you guys. They were they, they live in Minnesota. They came down to the Dells a couple weeks ago, and I really wanted to see them, and it just didn't happen. So um, you saw my short. Thanks, thanks, Nancy. Yeah, I try to do the shorts more. I uh, I I think I'm more. Uh, I think. Let's I'm, go! Come on, talk. I, I think I'm more um, 
confident on the YouTube. You seem to be enjoying this. You're so doing just I'm fine. I'm definitely enjoying it because I love all these comments. Look at them. So They're what amazing. do you think? You always oh yell at gosh. me. What are you doing on a live stream for? Yes, this is Christ great. is risen. That is for sure. That's what we are doing tomorrow. That is the whole reason for Easter. So, yes. So thank you, everyone, for joining. This has been great. We really appreciate all the nice comments and the encouragement. Seven days carnivore. You're doing great. Yeah, I feel you're good. Going. I am a little tired gone. now, but I've been, I've been here for a couple hours, so I'm kind of tired. So good night, yeah. everyone, and thank you so much for all the nice comments. We really appreciate it. And happy Easter yeah, tomorrow. Easter. Spend some good time with your family. Yes. Thankful, grateful, blessed. Have a good night. Good night, good night you gotta guys. Do the, you got to do the beep, Jen. Beep. Say beep. Beep.